Hey, everybody who comes on. I hope that um, by the time you guys get on, you guys are having a great Resurrection Sunday. Um, sorry if I'm a little monotone. I am really tired and I'm really on through the obedience of Christ because I had no intentions on coming on whatsoever. But um, I am obedient to what my father asks me to do because... That's daddy God right there. And I know people don't like that, but I got to do what God says. Hi, everybody. I pray that you guys are well. Before anything, I just want to get into a quick prayer just to bless this um, live. And forgive me again if I'm a little like slow to speak and stuff like that. It's because I really, I truly was not expecting to come on. But I feel like every time I wear this, my in the house top, I always seem to be having <laughs> to come on here. So all that said. Um, Jehovah, I just, before anything, just want to give you all the praise and all the thanks. Just thank you for another day. Thank you for everybody who's going to hear the words that you are putting in me to just speak and share my testimony, Father God. I pray that this word reaches everybody in their specific needs at the specific time to which you, you know, wanted to reach them, Father God. I pray that these words bless the people who come on this life, Father God. And I pray that as you're continuing to do a work in me, Father God, that it's not just for me, but it's for all the people who are, are ushered under my voice, Father God. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you increase them. I pray that you give them clarity in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. I pray that a revelation of your son will happen in their lives and in their families' lives, Father God, and that true revival will, will come upon those who are hearing what you have to say in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. I know sometimes we don't always have the words. I know sometimes that we don't always have the language to understand it, but you still love us so greatly, Father God. So more than anything, I just pray for those on this life, Father God, to feel your love, just a huge rush of your love. I want them to feel the Holy Spirit, to feel the comforter completely, Father God. Wrap your arms around those who are brokenhearted because you do not your word does not return onto you, Lord. You said that you are close to the brokenhearted, Father God. You said that you are close to those who are ailing in spirit, Father God. So I just pray that you wrap your arms and your love around them in the mighty name of Jesus. All this I pray in your darling son's name, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, okay. So, hey, everybody. I pray that you guys are well. Again, forgive me if I'm a little monotone and I don't have like that pep in my step like I usually do. Like my house is like even a mess because I'm like, putting things together because prophetically I'm just getting my stuff together because I need to get up out of here. So yeah. So the reason that I'm coming on is because I've been feeling like this nudge all day to like literally get on and do a testimony video. Um, a lot of people have asked me about like my testimony and I haven't necessarily shared it. I've shared it kind of like subsequently in videos as I've gone through, like, you know, just coming on and speaking to you guys, but I haven't really sat down and done a detailed video on like how I came to Christ. And so try to follow me as I go through this. Cause again, I really wasn't thinking about getting on here whatsoever or anything like that. And Hey, to all of you guys that are getting on, God bless you guys so much. Thank you for spending your Sunday evening with me. I pray that you guys had an amazing resurrection Sunday. I know people think that it is Easter, baby. It's not Easter. That is a pagan holiday, baby. That is about the goddess of fertility. And we don't do that over here. We talking about how God, he was on the cross, right? He died. He bared the iniquity of all of man all the way upward to today, right now, this present breathing moment. He literally bared the iniquity of all of man, literally was crucified on that cross, nails staked into his hands, into his feet. They put a thorny crown on his head. They and they really embarrassed the greatest of all and while he made himself the least. But all that said, he dies. He says it is finished. He dies. He goes dies, right? He goes to hell. He gets the keys of death. I don't know what he does because if it was me, I feel like I would have been Okay, I would have really gave Satan that three piece, but we don't know. I don't know what really happened down there, but we just know that he rose again on Sunday and he saw Mary Mac. You know, he's all right. So you, we already know how this went down and stuff like that. Those of you who are in Christ. And as I continue to steward this space and God leads me, I am going to be doing words and like, you know, using my Bible to like, you know, do Bible studies and stuff like that, because I feel like that's a part of like what God is calling me to do. And just to like, kind of, before I jump into the testimony, I just want to side segue for the longest time, I've been having a hard time understanding like how to navigate my platform because I take what God wants me to do seriously, but I'm also still, there's still a work being done in me, which is why, like, even in my last video, I was like, I cannot contort my mouth to just always speak in a certain way or with a certain vernacular or just kind of like 
apprehend myself from cursing at times, even though I very much want to, but I'm just not all the way there yet. And so I think that really as I'm growing in Christ, that's really the journey like that God has me on. And he wants me to exemplify what it looks like in, out, and through, you know, so I'm not a finished or a perfect work, but I'm just, you know, a progressing work going through and I'm taking y'all on the journey with me, those who want to be on the journey. So all that said, um, I will be coming back and talking about beauty and Christ and scriptures and like, you know, all these different things as, you know, the Holy Spirit leads and disciples me. So, and sorry for not looking at the comments as of yet. I'm just going to get into this testimony and then I'm going to hop into the comments. And hey, again, to everybody that's on. Okay. So how did I come to Christ? So this majority wise, how it all started was really my last relationship. And I know you guys are probably tired. I, honestly, I don't care if you guys are tired of hearing me talk about that last relationship. I'm going to talk about that last relationship until it's completely threaded out of my being. And I don't have nothing else to say because that was the foundation that was built, that allotted me to be able to hold on to God's hand in a way that I had not done in former seasons, no matter the fact that God is omniscient and omnipresent. And he was, you know, I was stretching the olive branch, but I did not have the perception to understand that because there was this mass delusion going on about, you know, how we could so to speak, manifest our own lives and our destinies and our will and stuff like that. So I didn't see a, a reason or a, a necessity in, you know, having a relationship with Christ. Um, and it wasn't solely because of my last relationship that I, you know, ended up being, you know, a Christian, so to speak, but it helped a lot, like foundationally. So going back to like, you know, how all of that started, the spiritual warfare that I experienced when I was, and I'm going to say names in this video because I'm tired. Ashada is tired. So even where Kiara Marie, you say it's your truth. Oh yes. I am just going to talk the plain, 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 plain truth. I'm tired of having to, you know, be, um, particularly poised when I could just like thread it out. If I just say it as it is and as it was. So um, I dated Osazwa back in, I started dating him in 2016. In fact, I dated him, I started dating him November 13th, 2016, which was his birthday. And from that day onward to the day that it officially ended, which was 666 days later on September 10th, which is the day after my birthday, um, I was in serious spiritual warfare, serious, serious spiritual warfare fighting for my life every single day, every single day of that relationship. Like the fact that, and if I cry a few times on this live, um, I mean, I'm not going to say forgive me because like that's, I'm just healing and shedding. So that's just natural, but you know, just give me the, the space and the grace to like, you know, emote through this process. So, um, I'm in that relationship. I am literally fighting for my life every day. I'm even like when I look back at just like God's grace and his mercy that I was able to even navigate my platform while being in a legitimate domestic violent relationship, no matter the fact that he did not put his hands on me, but he would threaten his own livelihood to therefore psychologically entrap me in the relationship, which is domestic violence. And a lot of people don't know that because people don't talk to those nuanced spaces. It was very... I, I'm just like amazed at the capacity that God gave me to be able to navigate that space. And I think for a lot of people, this is why they probably feel the way, the ones that don't like me, they probably feel the ways that they feel about me. Cause they're just like, Oh, like she, like, you don't look like what you're going through. Like, bitch, what do you want me to look like dead? Like, Oh, I don't, I don't know. Like I'm, that's just not what it is. And that's just not how I'm going to move. But if Shade is tired, Shade is tired. And I, a lot of times in those former spaces when I was with O, I utilized YouTube at the time to occupy the time that we were in the same space so that I didn't have to How do I, to, to like fill the space so that my livelihood was not threatened in those hours. So I would just dedicate myself to, you know, YouTube at that time. And when people ask like, you know, why was I in the relationship and stuff like that? When you're in a domestic violent relationship, you're a hostage point blank period, point blank period there. You not getting out until you getting out. 
And that's really something between you and God and you and God. So all that said, um, I was in that relationship. And then there afterwards, I got out of that relationship. Well, the relationship ended in the way that it did. I've already like discussed that many times. And um, about two months later, I ended up in the next relationship that I was in with my former partner, said person. I'm not going to say his name because I believe he's in a new relationship and I just want to respect that space. But I am going to talk about that relationship in context to like what I'm making sense to. So um, I ended up in my new relationship. And for some people where they may have thought that that was like fast, I had mentally left the relationship with O from the beginning of the relationship. The only reason I didn't really leave is because if somebody keeps saying they're going to kill themselves if you don't be with them, you'd be like, oh, dang. And I had never dealt with anything like that. I started that relationship, I think, when I was 22. And I didn't know that people operated like that. Like, where I'm from, like, people are way too prideful to be talking about suicide in a breakup. Like, it's like, on to the next, like, I'm bouncing to the next dick boy. Like, that's how people move from my town. So to go somewhere where people, like, are like, I'm going to kill myself if you don't be with me. It's just like, whoa, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, like, it was plenty of fish in the sea, but this, I didn't know at the time was literally like, this is psychological warfare and spiritual warfare, but I didn't know all that jazz. Like I was a young person. So I ended up in my next relationship about two months later. And I guess people were like, Oh, like, how did you end up in a relationship so fast? Like I said, I was mentally out of my other relationship and getting into this relationship, I had taken it very, how do I express this? I, I tried to take that relationship as slowly as I could. I'm talking about my new relationship, my at the time new relationship with my last partner. Um, but undeniably the chemistry and the, the reality of the love between me and that person felt very real. I like, I cannot deny that. And where other people may it don't even matter what other people felt. I don't give a fuck because my whole family felt that. Everybody felt what was going on between me and that last person. I would never. And this is why I was also, there's like so much to say. So again, forgive me if like, I don't always have language for these spaces, but it's like, I would never in my entire life pretend to be in love with somebody. Even when I was with Osazwa, I told y'all, oh, this feels like Stockholm Syndrome. This feels like, you know, I was always honest about these spaces. I never tried to jazz it up and razzle dazzle, dazzle it or anything like that. Like, I'm not that type of person. Literally at all. I've always keeping it, kept it a thousand percent factual with y'all about how I navigate certain spaces. Dead ass. And I, I, I'm also not a pusher of like narratives, so I'm not going to push fake shit. And I've always been like that from a young age. So like even the very first partner that I had, which I had talked about a little bit in my um, Beware of Envy video and like how he really broke my heart. Like when he came back a couple years later, before that time that he came in, he hugged me like back in like 2017, a little bit after I got out of my relationship with Owen, please like try to follow because I know some of you guys are like hopping on now. So just try to follow or you're going to have to go back and like listen to the context before you say, oh, which partner am I talking about? I'm talking about my very first partner that I ever dated right now. When he came back to see me in 2017, he literally was like, he basically wanted to like be with me so that we could utilize my platform as a space to grow socially. If Shade wanted to grow socially more than Shade has already grown socially, I would have been doing the same tomfoolery that everybody else is doing. Shade does not need to be in a relationship to convince people of anything. And Shade is not going to get in a relationship with anybody to convince anybody of anything. Shade dates for, and I don't know why this makes me emotional, but Shade only dates for love. Only dates for love. I dated O in some subsequent parts, I dated him for love because I did not want to abandon this black man as we are in basically a foreign land because Santa Barbara, California is overwhelmingly Caucasian and even like ideology wise and just like the normativeness is just overwhelmingly 
quite. And so to me, to for me to be a black American woman with Jamaican roots and for him to be an African person, African person, I didn't mean to say it like that, but to be Nigerian and to be, you know, have like just these different connections to like, you know, blackness. It was like, it kind of felt like, you know what, we should stick it out, my brother. You know, that's how I felt. So I say all that to say, like, I don't have no, I don't have no damn gender to show nobody no, no black love just for the sense of like being black love aesthetic. Like that's like, I'm not an, I don't even, uh uh-uh, I rebuke you devil. Sorry, my computer just like kind of did this thing. Anyways, I don't do shit for like aesthetics. I don't even, and this is no shade to like influencer or, or like, you know, um, Instagram culture, anything like that. Get it how you live it. Do what you got to do, baby. I understand. But like, I don't, the pictures on my Instagram, I don't even, those aren't even pictures that I said, let me get dressed to take a picture on Instagram. Like I take a picture and I post it if it, if I actually went somewhere. Like, I don't, I can't do stuff like that because for me, that feels depressing and like fake. Like, that's how much non-fake I am because I just don't like fake shit. I just don't. I'll, although I was getting those fake bags from China when they were sending them to me because I wasn't going to spend $1,000 for no bag. Anyhow, testimonies. <laughs> just follow me because again, I didn't know I was going to be on here. So um, I end up in the relationship now with said person who was the last person. I'm going to just say his name, Stefan. So, um, I'm in that relationship. I did not fake any part of that relationship. I don't feel like he faked any part of that relationship with me. Now, when we first started our relationship, I, well, I had a genial interest in growing my relationship with God, but it really started from before I got in the relationship and even knew who he was. Because if you go to my life update video, which is still up on my channel where I'm like crying at the, like the end of it and stuff like that. And I'm also expressing my gratitude for this platform and all those of you who have like grown with me through like, you know, my journey and stuff. Um, I, I say in that video, like, God, I just want you. I just want you. So to get through the relationship with, oh, where somebody wants to literally stab me to death, like every other freaking day to then be in a relationship with Stefan and to literally like mature in Christ as the relationship went through because I had made a declaration out of my mouth before I even met Stefan that I wanted to get closer to God and God used that as the foundation for me to get closer to him. Why would I, why would I act, why would I, why would I, why would somebody, why would I fake that? You know, like people, when people act like, you know, I was in like a bad relationship with Stefan, like, and, I, and just follow me because this is a part of the testimony. Why would I fake that? How could I get closer to Christ and you guys can feel it too and be in a bad relationship simultaneously? And I that does happen for some people, but like, would I be this close to, to like, you know, to just a, 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 a renewed mind in Christ? A, a real relationship where I'm dwelling with the Holy Spirit, where I'm seeking the Lord because I know that he He loves me. I just like, if it wasn't for that relationship that like where God demonstrated so much of his character through it, through Stefan, would I really be this much more closer to God? The only reason me and said person are not together anymore is because I, this person didn't want to surrender their will over to God and then wanted to, and I'm going to say this, I'm side segueing and I'm going to like expound on this if it's necessary moving forward. We broke up. I broke up with this person because towards the end, and, and this is hard for a lot of people. When God says surrender, some people don't want to surrender. And here's the thing. You can't force nobody to surrender. They have to get to the end of themselves for themselves so that God can do the work in them. And Sade is not a forcer of people's wills, but I will gracefully leave your life. And if it ain't graceful, it's because you provoked me and you pushed the motherfucking button for the bear to come out. So now a bitch is roaring and mauling. So pe- when people say like, oh, my ministry, uh, somebody said in the Beware of Envy video, <laughs> like uh, my ministry is not, oh, man, they said it's so funny. Like, my ministry is not violence. Okay, hold on. Let's look at the scriptures though. Because some of the times God said, We gonna we I'm taking y'all into war. I'm taking my 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 children into their camp to destroy the enemy. 
And so, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Deborah because that's the anointing that I have over my life. And that's what God literally told me specifically. And he confirmed it twice. Literally, He confirmed it three times. So I know that my God is not a liar. So if you poke the bear and I get a download from the Holy Spirit to, to handle you a certain type of way, baby, you get a handle that certain type of way point blank period. And I will repent there afterwards because if Peter can chop off somebody's ear for Jesus and be forgiven and accepted into the kingdom of heaven, to which I believe that it is exactly where he is residing right now. Right. And David could go sleep with Bathsheba and kill Bathsheba's husband, but he renders his heart over to the Lord and says, Oh, I've sinned so greatly. Please clean me with hyssop. Make me over. If God tell me to whoop that Shade is going to look that. Okay? So y'all understood it when I was in my Erica Badu, Erica Badu days, right? And Erica Badu put up this tweet, right? And she was like, it's not always peace, love, and blessings and incense. Sometimes it's a motherfucking blunt and a Colt 45 and break the... Okay? And so... All that said, because y'all probably was like, all right, Shade. But no, I'm being for real. And I, that's the thing, too. Like, everybody wants, like, the clean Christian girl, you know? Like, they want you to be, like, rigid. Not rigid, but, like, religious, so to speak. Religiously rigid. And I am not that person, you know? I am still being made over. So when people are, like, you know... It's weird. Simultaneously, people are like ripping me apart while also trying to like understand how I'm put together. And it's like, there is no part of me that has ever lied or has ever shown something that is not who I am. Okay. So whether I'm wearing brown lipstick or wearing extensions or not wearing extensions and not wearing brown lipstick and not being into beauty, I've always been Sade. I've always been, I've always been, I've always been. And, you know, to side segue again, but I'll make sense of this as I expound moving forward in this testimony, like going to Jamaica and experiencing all of what I experienced there has shown me so greatly that it really doesn't matter because no matter which way people are either going to try to put you together or pull you apart. So just be who you are. You're on a journey. Don't you don't gotta impress nobody who don't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. That's God's job and God's job alone. Alone. Him alone. So now all that said, talking about the foundation of, you know, that relationship and stuff. And well, those relationships and stuff, and like, you know, the last relationship most specifically, and how it significantly was the foundation for me to grow in Christ. I'm gonna skip ahead. Well, I'm gonna actually insert some more context for this part. So, when I was initially in the relationship, because I had made that declaration before I had met Stefan about how I wanted to get closer to Christ, when I met Stefan, I got treated. When I tell you it was baby girl treatment over there, okay. Okay, like you think I will fucking fake that shit? No, ma'am. If I don't like how I'm being treated, I won't even say nothing. I get up out of niggas' beds and I go. Okay, that's what I do. That's what I did. You know, like I said, when I was back on harlot time, so to speak, I was a sophisticated hoe. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I, it was a different type of time. But when he came into my life, he said, cut all the other niggas off. And when a nigga talked to me like that, I'm like, okay, daddy, I'm gonna cut off all the niggas. Okay, period. And so I did. And so um, we're navigating the relationship and, you know, it's worldly because I was still in the world, but it was worldly with a, a je ne sais quoi to it. You understand what I'm saying? So it was like, it felt like we, as we continued to grow, especially in the first two to three, rather the three to four month mark. And my guard was like starting to come down. Cause like I said, I had just gotten out of a relationship where somebody literally wanted to stab me to death every other day. So I'm not really like, and I'm in the relationship, but I'm just like waiting for this person to be like evil. And that's not what I experienced. Every day, it was like this person just loved me more and more and more. I couldn't show up for spaces. I didn't have the capacity. I, some days I would just feel like I was floating. Like literally like, like I couldn't get a grip of reality, especially because simultaneously my parents are divorcing. My sister is literally in the asylum, you know? So I'm just like, I can't even make sense of reality right now. Why are you here treating me so good? I don't get it. And I'm trying not to cry, but it's like, why would I fake that? 
Why would I fake that? Nobody can fake that. Nobody can fake that. So it scared me a lot because I was just like, dang, like this is so great, but I don't even have the capacity to like give, I feel like give it back. Like, I feel like I owe you this back, but like you met me at the worst time in my life. And I just, I, I wish I could give you the gift of who I used to be, but I can't because I just am so, I'm just trying to get a grip and you want to be here while I'm trying to get a grip. God bless you, bro. You know? And again, at this time we were still worldly, but you know, I was always a deep person and we was having deep conversation so like even in the beware of envy video just to like make sense of it i say like some of like the silly stuff of like you know how deep the love was like oh like you know farts and like a missing tooth and stuff no we were having intellectual conversation okay like i'm not sleeping with stupid niggas okay period even though to keep it a stack he ain't the he ain't the brightest bulb okay not even to be away or anything like that he's brilliant in his own ways which i loved and admonished and admired so greatly and deeply but there are other things where he don't got like the language for certain things but that's all right baby that's all right you smart in your ways and i'm smart <laughs> In my ways ain't no bar, ain't no problem, you know. Until it became a problem, and I'm gonna talk about that towards the end. And then I got, and I'm gonna talk about this too. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna add this right here too. This nigga scapegoated me to other bitches, and yeah, I'm gonna talk about everything. I'm Shade ain't holding nothing back no more. Stop, everybody, stop playing with me. Because if you wanna be with me, if you wanna ride with me in a bend, you wanna go with me to where I'm going. It's only the truth, the truth only, the truth only. Cause that's what Christ died for. So don't play with me. If you don't want to, if you don't, don't even do it to yourself. If you, if you don't abide in the truth, cause I'm not in playing illusion, delusion with bitches no more and niggas no more. I'll, 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 I'll kill a nigga dead. Okay. Okay. If that's the strategy that God gives me and Lord forgive me, cause I know that, that I'm gonna have to stand bank on that word, but you already know the type of shit that I done did and then moved on. So it's just like, if you give me that strategy, all right. But anyhow, let me move forward. So, um, I kind of lost my train of thought. So if y'all could just remind me real quick where I was like talking like meaty wise and then like move forward. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Isabel, I love that. Don't stop the tears, be the ocean. I love that. I'm downloading that into the every crevice of me. I love that so deeply. Scapegoating me. Yes, we had intellectual conversation. I was side segueing the scapegoating thing because that's more towards like what happened in the breakup because I feel like his ego was hurt because I decided to break up with him. And I'm going I'm to expand on that, but just later. But I was talking about the relationship, the intellectual conversation, just the reality of how good the relationship was. Okay, so yes, I was experiencing a really amazing relationship at the worst time of my life. Um, by the graciousness and the love of Stefan Samuel Luna. Yeah, I'm going to say your whole name, baby, okay? Because I know who you are. You don't seem to know who you are right now, and your artwork has been showing it. And this is not even me saying this by way of, like, looking at his stuff or anything like that. The last time I saw him, I saw the big piece that he did. Them demons is trying to pull you to hell. And what you telling me? You want to go to hell with them? Wait, choose your side. Choose your side. You want to be out here lukewarm. Anyways, I don't want to like keep harping on that, but, um, I'm in the relationship and God is like demonstrating his faithfulness and his love towards me through Stefan. And, um, yeah, the relationship was like really good. We didn't really have like many problems, like for the first, like maybe like year, except that I was just very, like sometimes not there. Like I was there, but like, it was like, I, pro I also process things pretty slowly. So for me, it's like, I was always in a place of gratitude, but I'm, I'm sometimes I'm just like, like, I'm so overwhelmed by like goodness sometimes that I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know? So I just like, I don't know. I, I did my best. I did my very best to show my gratitude and my love for this person. 
you know, as I was like having like a hard time and stuff. And like with everything that he has been through, honestly, like it was just amazing to me that he had the capacity to even show up in the ways that he did. So all that said, I'm going to skip ahead now to this part. So now we're like a year and a half into the relationship. And let me just like spray my face real quick. Sorry, this is Rose Water from Trader Joe's. Okay, so um, a year and a half into the relationship, this is when I'm telling y'all, I'm, did they lie? When them freaking Popeye's chicken sandwiches came out and they was making those memes, like, watch out for those commercials that's going to be like something, something, mesothemia, y'all know what I'm talking about, like, <laughs> like, after them chicken sandwiches came out, about a couple months later, we went into the COVID, so did the people peep it or did the people not peep it? You want to say, I'm joking, but like, I'm also being kind of serious because it's like, you see what, you see, you see what's going on here. But anyways, so, um, <laughs> so we go, my sister is like feeding for a, a chicken sandwich. She had just come out of the, the, we call it the spa, but it was the asylum. And, um, but moving forward, if you're following along and you've been with me on this journey, we call it the spa. Okay. To get your mind right. Even though American asylums are horrible institutions and they need to be reformed greatly and gravely, just like the prison system. But we're not going to talk about that right now. If y'all want to follow stuff like that, go look at Tiana Empower's videos because she talks about stuff like that. That All that said, um, we go to buy a Popeye's chicken sandwich and I don't even really eat Popeye's like that no more. Like really don't. So, but you know, it was so hyped up that we was like, my sister really wanted it. So me and Steph was like, all right, we're going to go buy the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Y'all, we go in there to buy Popeye's chicken sandwich. Some nigga in there acting a dang boo-boo fool, just boo-boo the foolish or whatever for a Popeye's chicken sandwich. And and I've I've talked about this before. Um, I forget. I don't know if that video is up anymore. I think I took it down. But um, we go in there. This man is acting a mess. I tell that man to quiet down while we're online or something of the nature. The video captures it better. And me and Steph are like together. Steph is standing in front of me. And this man pulls out a whole, hold on, where's my knife? He pulled out like a knife like this, okay? But it had like more ridges from out of his pants. From out his damn pants. I swear, people always want to stab me. But let me tell you something. I'm not out of here until God says it's over, period, point blank. But all that said, Steph literally comes and stands right in front of me. He comes and stands, and so it's me, my mom, and Steph. And this Steph stands right in front of me. And I'm the type of person, it's me and you, baby. So it's like, I was like, I'm, I kind of backed up a little bit because of the shock of it. But Steph literally just goes right in front. And I'm just like, and my mom is like pulling me back. Now, mind you, if y'all have been here with me for my journey for a while, you know me and my mom did not have the best relationship. So I'm like trying to get back to where Steph is. And she's like, she's pulling me with, I've never even felt my mom be this strong before in like life. And it was, it was such a simultaneous, like confusing thing because it was just like, I, not even to be away, but like I, the way I had viewed Steph, he was more of my family than even my mom. And that's kind of how Steph had felt about me at the time as well, at least. So that's what I felt. I mean, if a nigga feeling to take a whole knifey knife for you, I would I would think so. I don't think that can be made up. And I, I can attest to this. There were video cameras and everything like that. So I have no reason to lie about this. Okay. And so it was just a conundrum of a situation. And I the reason I even bring that up is because if it if if i was making all of what happened in that relationship up wh like what what would be the reason or or the source or the you know what if it wasn't love would an, like if it how, I, how do i even put language to this that that can't be fake that that to me, I, I just don't see that being fake or faked or anything like that. Like, if that's not love, is it fair to say I don't know what is? Because you're willing to, to take a sacrifice like that, and it's been a year and a half. So I just say that to exemplify how deep and real this was. Nothing was made up. Anyhow. 
moving forward now, so that was like when those chicken sandwiches came out. I think they came out in like October or November of 2019. 2020 comes and we and then March comes and we come into the COVID. My sister ends up catching COVID. Now, mind you, she had formerly been in the asylum. So she was on a lot of heavy medication because of like her diagnosis at the time. So when she ends up contracting COVID or rather pneumonia in her lungs. So like when she took the test, it never showed up as COVID. It just showed up as pneumonia in her lungs. But I remember when I saw her the day before the ambulance came for her, uh, me and Steph had went to go like, look, you know, speak with her and stuff like that. And I could literally see, I was like, she looks like she is not going to make it. She looks like she is about to die. Like I can see. And this is when COVID was fresh on the scene. So we didn't know nothing about, you know, COVID really. It was just like this, like a pandemic, you know, you're, it, we ain't never lived through nothing like this. So this is the first time that we're experiencing something like this. So when I see that I go, this is when my sister was living at my grandparents' house and my parents were also living there. Um, but my mom specifically was there that day. And so Somebody said, I need a gun, girl. I don't need no gun. I am the gun. God is the gun. I'm I'm divinely protected. And until he won't take me out, I'm going to be here to do his work. So, um, but going back to the story, but I understand what you're saying, though. People be saying that, like, oh, you need a gun. Like, no, don't. we don't need guns. Guns is not solving the problems. You need Christ Jesus. Like, literally, he is risen. That's kind of like what the, the whole gospel is about. And I think that's also why I'm, like, here to testify, because I'm really just doing this by the obedience of Christ. I really don't. I know why I'm here to share like this testimony, but I really kind of also don't know why, because I wasn't, I was not planning on getting on here. But anyhow, so um, my sister is like, you know, sick. I walk across to the room where my mom is and I'm like, and she's laying in the bed and I'm like, oh, we need to pray for Gabby. And I, at the time, I, I didn't really know that much about, not even to be like silly or stupid, but like, I, I have prayed, I, I, upward to this point, I had prayed before, but I, it's not like I was like a prayer warrior or anything like that. Like I was more than anything, the way that I would have described myself before coming into Christ as much as I have was like a strong willed person. So like I was the type of person, like if I put my mind to it, I will achieve this thing. Once you come into Christ, you realize that being strong-willed is a great foundation for Christ to use you, but it is not the it's not the capacity to which God will use you entirely and completely because your strong will cannot save a situation outside of inviting the God into that situation for a perfect work and his perfect will to be done. And those who understand that by way of like being made over and under just going through some things you understand that on a deeper level. And I think as I go through this more, like I'll be able to expound on that, but that's the only way I, I know how to articulate it at this time. And so forgive me if I don't always have exact language for certain things as I like, you know, go through this and just give me a second to drink some water. Okay. So I say to my mom, like we need to pray for Gabriella and Y'all already know how my mom was, if you have been on my journey for a long time. Not the greatest or the best person whatsoever. Um, and so she's laying there, and she look half dead, and she's like, pray for what? And I just turn around, and I leave, and I come across the street. And I come back to my room, and it's me and Steph, and we're walking into the house. And he gets on the video games. Um, and I don't say that by way of, like, he gets on the video games. Like, it would just, you know... It was just a normal evening. He gets on the video games and I just get into prayer. And like I said, as I'm like contextualizing this, I never really, I never really prayed before. Like I, I prayed before, but I never prayed like how I prayed this evening. So I'm like standing, not standing. I'm sitting in front of my bathroom because like on this side of the room is where I would be. And Steph was on the other side. We really shared this one room together, like for a good long while, like hilariously. I don't know how we made it through, but, you know, for the time that it was, we did a good job navigating this space. Well, we did the best that we could to navigate the space. So his space was on the other side of the room. So I'm like where the bathroom is kind of on his side. And I am sitting in front of the mirror. And I'm not looking and I'm just praying. I am praying, praying, praying for my sister. And then I feel, I literally 
feel, God. I literally, I never, I'm, I was always the type of person, like, I, it's not so much that I needed to see it to believe it because I always believed that there was a spiritual world, but like nobody, nobody ever made sense of relationship that, that God wants to have with us, you know, and that the feeling of God is real, you know, and now that I know it without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not scared to profess it. Cause I'm not a liar, <laughs> period. Like, so I, and I know that's why God just, he, he loves all his children, but I know God loves me because he know I'm not scared to talk about him. I'm not scared to talk about him. I'm not, I, I really love God. Like, and I'm not a perfect person at all, but Shade love her some God. And I choose God before I choose anybody, before I choose my nigga, before I choose my friends. I don't care. I, before I choose my platform. Like, I'm blessed. Like, even though I'm really, like, in the pit still and I'm going through a lot of crap, like, God loves me and I love God, period. So I'm there, I'm praying, and I just feel like, uh, I think the word for the Holy Spirit after, like, you know what I'm talking about, in the book of Acts, like, the Ruha comes. <laughs> the Ruha, I don't know how to say it. You know, the Hebrews and them people with the, you know, they got the language for it, but, like, I feel feel the Holy Spirit just encompass itself around me. That it's like a like a beautiful dynamic like dance or something like that. It's so it it's so profound. There's really not language for it. And the thing about, you know, God, it's not always a feeling, but when you're blessed enough to feel God or hear God or experience God and it's every day if you're really in relationship. But when you haven't known God in that way formally and then you feel it you you just become so aware of like oh my god you you do not you do not abandon us you are literally here we just have to open our eyes and our ears and just acknowledge acknowledge and it sounds like crazy but it's it's not and people who have been through some ish really know you really know. You really know where your help comes from. You really, you really know. You really end up knowing where your help comes from. So the next day, the ambulance comes, picks up my sister. Me and Steph are driving. Well, Steph is driving because Steph would, I was like little Miss Daisy in the car. Steph would drive everywhere. He would always spin that wheel and I would just be in the car and sitting pretty. So we're driving behind the ambulance and stuff. My sister goes into the hospital and I'm just like praying, praying, praying. I tell you this, and this is how I know without a shadow of a doubt that I know without a shadow of a doubt God hears my prayers because I've seen him literally in front of my eyes do things that I'm like, there's not really language for. It's just like, it's so magnificent. Like, and that's, that word is an understatement to just the quality of like what God does. I genuinely and genially believe that my sister was not going to make it without those prayers. And I'm not saying that because like, I'm like the best prayer or anything like that, but the intercession prayers go up to God, past the ceiling, into the third heaven, into his throne room as a pleasing aroma. He loves to save his children. He, he loves to say it is not over. Henceforth, he is risen. He is risen. If it's not done, it's not done. But people think like when it looks like it's done, people are like, oh, they throw in the towel. They're like, oh, it's over. Oh, that person is dead. Oh, they're a vegetable. You know, people in comas can hear you. And I'm sorry for like being emotional, but it's like they can hear you. So if speak life, speak life. And so I genuinely, I, I just feel in my heart of hearts and I know, honestly, I'm going to say it because I just know, I know that if I did not pray the way I prayed, she wasn't going to make it. She wasn't going to make it. They end up saying she doesn't have COVID and that she has pneumonia in her lungs. Now, upward to today, even before the COVID, people were dying of pneumonia. So you, you, you count the, you, you, you count the coin. You look at what it was looking like. It was looking like it was over. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, we're in the middle of a pandemic. The hospitals are just up to, 
beyond capacity you know they're even sociopathically like killing people in the war like y'all already know y'all heard everything that was going on and it's weird because that time almost feels like 10 years ago but it was really we're only in 2022 so it's just like that that time was so crazy that there's like this one tiktok i don't have tiktok but i remember when i saw this it's like somebody was like oh like when kids are like 10 years in the future and they're like mom what was 2020 and the person is like they like go <laughs> they just like go and slip into like a whole like ooh, like you know because it was 2020 was so damn traumatizing and it's like by the grace of god that we're all still here because it's just like what was that even though we were all there to experience it it was like what was that you know tell me if i'm a liar but i know i'm not lying you know so from there, that was really the the pickup point of like how I got closer to God. And from there, God was just his whole, everything that I feel like he's always wanted to like show me and like be for me just exploded. It just exploded to a point of where like every day I was like in awe of just like, wow, like to the, it's some, and it's just, I'm just like, wow, you really are real. Like, and I knew this, but it was like, I knew it in a different way. Like, I literally, like, I knew that God was like real. And the thing about God, once you have a relationship with him, you literally just keep growing in a, in a posture of like, you are really real. Like, and to the point, it just almost kind of makes you laugh because it's just like, you are really real. Like, like this whole time I didn't have a relationship with you, but you are really this real. Like, dang, like I miss, I kind of missed out on a lot of stuff then, you know, but did I really, because everything is passes through your hands, you know, and you're so good and so gracious that you will even make allowance for the permissiveness of like when we're not in your perfect will so that because we're already called to you until that appointed time comes, you let us navigate. By our way of our free will. I mean, why do people try to act like God is controlling when he literally is like, baby, you got, go on, go on ahead, Glen Coco, go on ahead. You, if you want to choose me, choose me. Like, I'm not making it hard for you. I'll chase in those I love, but I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to force you. But when, and I'm not even trying to be away, but when the new world order comes, they're going to force you. Okay. So it's like we, all of mankind was made to give worship and glory to God. And people are so deep in their ego and in their unrepentant sin and in their ideas of materialism and capitalism. And, you know, what did God do for me and what God didn't do for them? Didn't save their grandmama, didn't save the mom, didn't save the dad, didn't save the sister, that they don't acknowledge just the beauty. And I get those things too, because those are hard things to, to conceptualize, understand, process. But it's like, you like, you you you're missing the beauty of God for real. But let me move forward. Sorry, I need to drink some more water. I love that you guys are so engaged in the comment section. I really want to jump in, but I'm gonna go back and jump in after I get through this testimony. So, um. I see, I see God the way that he's always wanted to show himself to me. I'm growing, I'm growing, growing. And by the time April 1st comes, I think around between like November of 2019 upward to like March, I had been getting my period and I just follow me. Cause I know this sounds like a little off, but just follow me. I haven't getting my period in the middle of the month. So around like the 14th or something like that, if I remember correctly. April 1st, my period came on the 1st. So imagine, Im imagine that. And also I want to say, and I meant to say this earlier, and sorry if this seems like silly, but it is an important detail. And like, as I expound on what I'm about to say, I hopefully this will all make sense in its like full context. 
like I've said, when I entered the relationship with Steph, even though I was growing in Christ, there were things that I did not know. So I didn't know that like us living together was like a problem. Like I never had aspirations to get married or all those things or anything like that. Like I was, I was fine and dandy how everything was like that was obviously wanted to move and stuff, but like all those other things I was like, I can, I can do without, I didn't know God was, he said that baby girl, you're a wife. I didn't know that. Okay. And it's not because I didn't feel like I was worthy of that. Those were things that just were not on my agenda. I didn't, I didn't care about stuff like that. I'm going to just keep it stack with you. If the love is real, I don't need no, no ring. Now I need that. I need you to be devoted to Christ and love God to love me. Give me a ring. Okay. It don't even got to be super fancy. Just get, give me the ring that God puts on your heart to give me and give me a little doji doge. Okay. A little wolf wolf. Okay. A little pug. All right. Okay, that's all I ask. That's all I ask. But anyhow, <laughs> so um, what was I saying? Oh, when the in the beginning parts of the relationship, it was carnal. So you know, me and said person, we was um every day, okay, every day, every night, okay, because that's how that's how I do. So I, when I tell you this season has been hard, consecration, okay. So I I, I don't want to like be fake with y'all and like. Like, yes, I'm being made over to holiness and stuff like that. But people act like Christians don't experience, like, humanity and, like, human things the same. No, baby, I be thinking, I be, I could be in the middle of my word and something will just come to my mind. I'll be like, ooh, I rebuke you in the mighty name of Lord Jesus. I just, I make this thought captive to you right now, okay? All right? So it's like, I say all that to say just to provide context of, like, by the time April 1st came and my period had come, my menstrual had come, I felt God, I didn't understand so much, but I felt God say like, no more sex, like no more. And because it was so evident, even though I did slip up a few times there afterwards, I was in a committed, happy relationship. Okay. I repented, but that's, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit here and tell you the truth. like. I felt God say like, no more. And I tried to understand that for a long time. <laughs> and I, even when I would try to get answers about it, people were not really being clear about it. Like when I would be like, oh, is it a problem for me and said person to be living together? There wasn't clarity on that. It's like, oh, well, you already are. And it's like, God was saying, no, no, like I am doing a new thing, but I didn't really fully understand it to its capacity because I was like, Huh? Like, I just, I, I, just, I lacked understanding the way somebody would when you're not, you know, familiar with scripture and like, you know, the Holy Spirit and so on, so on. So all that said, um, I feel that I'm supposed to stop doing that. And so we, we stop literally, I tell said person and they're like, no, like I, and again, none of that, none of the relationship was like fake. We started consecrating ourselves. We started being made over to the likeness of Christ in the ways that we knew how and were understanding at the time. So now do I have more hindsight to some of the things that God was saying in those times? Absolutely. But for what we understood at the time, I would say that we were maturing together a great deal, literally together. It wasn't something by force or anything like that. We were making anointing oil by the discipleship of the Holy Spirit together, you know, and there were things that I, I just want to say this. He grew up um, Catholic and oh, Holy Spirit, I, I need, I invite you into the space to like speak the words to which you want me to speak, because I really want to speak this part delicately, frankly, delicately, maturely, and with reverence in Jesus name. So from what I understand right now, what I understand, and I've seen other people's testimonies of this as well. And I'm going to add testimonies in the description box when I'm done and other information. God cares about relationship and devotion to him. Oh, it's, it's, I'm going to leave it like that in short. And say this next part and then move forward because I don't have the capacity to speak to this because I am I would have to get deeply theological and it will take away from like the precedence of like the testimony at large.
God cares about relationship and devotion. Because he chastens those he loves, he will make them over and bring them into relationship with him by the standard, if they're following and being obedient and trusting him, by the standard to which he calls them to. So religiosity will break off. I'm going to leave it like that. And so to now follow up with how said person was Catholic, as we were growing relationship wise with Christ and he was feeling the Holy Spirit too, because it was dwelling so loud in this room. He had a struggle at first with like getting on his knees and praying. He's like, oh, I don't need to pray like that. And I'm like, look, God is speaking. He's saying devotional, like this is how we should pray. Maybe two, three days later, he joins in. So it was, a. am not going to front like it was like just peaches and cream easy because we're fighting our flesh and we're fighting things where it's like you, the, you're fighting your ego, you're fighting your flesh, you're fighting tradition, you're fighting culture, you're fighting all these different things. But who wins the, who wins the war? God. So if God says, do it like this for me, because I'm trying to teach you something, I'm trying to show you something. Sade is going to, I don't care if that shit look foolish to you and it don't make no sense to you. People thought that Christ was foolish, but was he a fool? No, no. And some people still don't see that and or understand that. And we don't, for, we ain't feeling to force it. It's good fruit. It sells itself, baby. And so I say that to say, when I would say these things like, hey, I'm hearing and the instruction is to like, you know, be submitted, surrender, you know, a couple days later, this person is, we're praying together. And mind you, just going back a little bit before the pandemic, we had went to a car wash while we were up in like Larchmont one time. And, um, he saw, Steph saw these like two like books. And they were devotion. They were biblical devotionals, mind you. This is a man who wanted, in like his youth, to be a preacher. So I don't have to hold on real quick. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. I have to clear my throat, y'all. And my room is a mess, so forgive me. I am so sorry. This is, like, so awkward because, like, <sighs> okay, can y'all give me a moment because I have to go and, like, get something. Anybody who's missing the point, don't engage with them. Literally, y'all ever see me engage with the foolish, demonic people who be jumping on the live trying to, like, make sense of something that don't make sense? You trying to make sense of something where it's, like, y'all don't engage with them. Spread love and y'all commune am amongst yourselves. Give me one second. I need to go and get something. But don't give them no attention. But also remind me where I left off at so that I can, <laughs> like, say the rest of what I need to say. Oh my Jesus. I'm sorry. This is so ghetto and so awkward, but this is like real life shit. <laughs> and also, my house is a mess because if any of you guys are like just now jumping in, I am literally like packing shit up and just like moving shit. So, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm sorry that that dropped. That's like very awkward, but I'm gonna pick it up now. Okay.
Okay, I'm so sorry. That is like so ghetto, but thank y'all for staying on. <laughs> um, please remind me where I was at and let me just like wash my hands. Somebody said the commercial break. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was, yeah, that was like a hot mess. My mom just like dropped in randomly. She told me she was going to drop off my stuff tomorrow, but she decided to drop it off today. But, um, I don't know. She just be doing shit. So I just gotta let her do what she doing. Ooh. Let me tell y'all real quick. Sorry. This is, this is going to be random. I'm not going to lie. There's this oil. There is this oil, right, called emu oil. Let me tell y'all. Skin, epidermis, like a baby's bottom. I'm going to show you that oil, but it's somewhere in the stuff that my mom just brought back for me. So when I go in there or come back another day, I'll go in there. But somebody remind me of where I left off that so I can, like, pick up. And so sorry for that randomness because that was really, really, really random and ghetto because my shit dropped off the thing. And my house is just a hot ass mess. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, about Steph getting the devotional books. And I think I had side segue to that. Before, but there was something else. So, because I had side segue to that to make sense of something, but something deeper. And yes, the oil is called emu, emu oil. I know it sounds weird, and when you look up like how they it's made, it's like uh. But I promise you, like it's it's really good. Surrender, praying. Also, Holy Spirit, I invite you to, like, help me remember, like, where you want me to pick up from in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay, so I guess I'll kind of go back to, like, the, yes, he wanted to be a pastor. Not a pastor. Well, he yeah, he wants to be a pastor, basically, a preacher. Um, talking how we were getting closer in our devotion as a couple. Yes. Okay, so let me just, like, marinate real quick so that it can, like, come up. Um, I remember that we went to a little bit before before the pandemic. We stopped at a car wash and he saw the devotionals and he picked them up for us and he bought them for us. Um, and those devotionals helped us to grow in Christ a lot together. And so in speaking to the conflict, the subsequent small conflict that was happening while he was trying to surrender so to speak in the ways that god was asking him to as god was like you know saying like you know we should you know pray on our knees and so on and be in like surrender mode so on and so on that was something that wasn't like a, a hard thing over time um forgive me because i'm still like trying to develop the language of like where i was going with everything that i was saying <sighs> there was that um, what else? I guess to move forward from there. At, okay, so after we started to develop a closer relationship with Christ, and we were both hearing from the Holy Spirit, we were both hearing from the Holy Spirit. And even though there was a, a bit of like, I wouldn't even call it apprehension, but like struggle to surrender on his end. He definitely was in surrender mode. And that wasn't something that in my eyes personally, that he was like making up. Like God was, the Holy Spirit was literally doing a work in him and doing a work in me. And it was happening simultaneously, even though it was two different works. So as that's happening, um, I'm still experiencing things with my sister going through like what she's going through and so on. And I'm still having the support of said person. And simultaneously, I'm also going through like a, a lot of heightened spiritual warfare because as, and forgive me if I didn't really pick up like where I left off, it's kind of like hard to remember completely. Y'all saw all the drama that just happened, that quick intermission, but all that aside, God is going to just have this fashioned how he will. So we just going to keep going through. Um, 
I'm going, we're going through a lot of spiritual warfare as a couple, because as we're now waking up to our identity in Christ, it's like the devil is fighting us tooth and nail in every capacity. So where we didn't have issues before, we're starting to have issues. And the issues were really related to comprehension and a lot of capacities. And that was very frustrating because, you know, um, communication was our, our strongest, our strongest, uh, what would it be called? Like foundational part of our relationship. We were very transparent with one another. We were very communicative and very, um, very friendly towards one another as well. Like it didn't ever feel like pressured to become or be or show up as anything but yourself. And so when I even talk about the end of how, like in the breakup, like what transfigured and who he became, I know that that's an attack from the enemy and that's why it's not so hard. I'm not taking things as hard. However, be it, I'm also a human person who has lamented and cried and been deeply frustrated by just the ridiculousness of some of what he has ended up doing because it's just like, one, I'm, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like that. And again, I'm, I'll come back to that like as I get towards the end, but I just still want to go through like the the majority of the testimony. So, um, I'm so sorry if I'm a little like, cause that really, my mom coming to drop it off was really very random and just really threw me off and like kind of annoyed me. <laughs> and then like that stuff dropping also really annoyed me, but I'm trying to get back to a posture of like just being composed. So, um, we're growing, we're growing separately, but also together and so on. There's a lot of attack on the relationship. I told you guys that um, Tehran Kumail Davis put Voodoo on our pictures. I sent him pictures because he used to run like me and somebody's daughter page. Something happened with that page. It ended up getting rendered over to another person. I don't even know if that is even true at this point. But and yeah, y'all can look him up. His name is um, Tehran Kumail Davis. I'd be saying names because I don't, I don't hear. And so he ends up like asking me for like pictures of me and Steph like to use for the page. And he, and, and around the same time, Steph had like just cut off on my hair for me. Thanks. I appreciated that. And you know, I'm like still going through this like whole transformation. I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm feeling really beautiful, even though I was like maybe like 15 pounds heavier, but I'm feeling beautiful. You know, I'm feeling good, all this jazz. And this, this dude just takes the pictures and Oh, that's what I meant to say. When I cut my hair, I put up a video called something, something, but I called it also Dear Dear April. That's really interesting that we're in April and like that's what um, it was called. Like something in the title was like called Dear April. He puts up the pictures on like his Instagram or something like that. And, and I wish I would have screenshot it, but I didn't because I'm not a petty person. So like when I saw it, I was just like, what? And he puts up like a caption. And like, it's like mimicking what I had put in the video. And I've noticed that as I've gone through these last couple of months, year and a half, and the spiritual warfare is heightened, a lot of people have done like this very like mimicking kind of thing towards me. And this is also why I do not post on social media and I don't get on social media. And towards like the ending part of like, aside from my very last picture posted there, I stopped putting up my face because I'm like, I, I genuinely can feel that people are taking my pictures and like doing like voodoo and doing like demonic stuff. And it's like, y'all are so annoying and stupid. Like, stop, stop, stop. It's, it's really annoying and stupid at this point. Please stop. Like literally please stop. But that's neither here nor there because I just get into warfare prayer mode. So when there's like demonic anything, astral projection, witchcraft, sorcery, wizards, warlocks, witches. <laughs> I'm about to say stupid stuff, but like any of y'all, I'm sending the Holy Ghost fire to stop playing with me. I literally will get up in the middle of the night and warfare pray with y'all. And y'all lucky that God asked us to do it like that, because honestly, I will be smacking you, bitch. I will smack, I'll, I like, and the thing is people be scared of like demons and like all these different types of stuff. They're more scared of you when you use 
the word of God than you than you could ever be scared of them. You start speaking the word of God, they start, I'm melting. I'm that's that's what happens to them. So you need, and that's why it's so important to have a relationship with Christ and to be rooted in the word of God. Because when you know what he says about who you are and and who he is, you don't have to fear nothing. You don't have to do all that jazz. But at the time I didn't know all that different type of stuff. So I'm just looking at it from like an intellectual point of view, like what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, you know? And then, like, the Holy Spirit was dropping words and knowledge on me, talking now about, like, Teron Kumel Davis, the guy who did the voodoo. He's dropping... So, at this point in time, I think the second season of You had come out, or maybe the third one, and now they're on their fourth, whichever season, where um the girl gets introduced, the one who's also in um The Haunting of Bly... Not The Haunting of Bly Manor, The Haunting of Hill House. You guys should watch that on Netflix too. It's really awesome. They talk about spiritual warfare there in a very real, real way. And one day I'm going to talk about like some of like when I like start to like expound and like come back like more like full fledged and like actually like film like videos and stuff. I'm going to talk about like the content I watch, the books I read, you know, aside from like biblical stuff and so on, so on. Um, And just like some of the things that like, because we're still in the world, we're not we're in the world, but not of the world. But sometimes God will use secular things. And I, I pray that there's no religious spirits on here. But sometimes God will use secular things to make you aware of certain things and to show you, oh, these are not like, you're not the only person experiencing this. And so a lot of people in Hollywood do this all the time, you know. But anyhow, just moving forward. Tehran, I start getting words of knowledge about him. And I didn't know that these were words of knowledge at the time. And what God was saying was like, he is like Joe from you. And I'm like, I, I remember one day I was just like, I wonder why he reminds me of Joe from you. And this is before I really realized like, oh, this nigga did something. But that's how I was thinking about him. Like, and it was like, yeah, you're obsessed. And even, even when we had the conversation that we ended up having for me to send him the pictures and follow me, because I know I'm, it kind of seems like a little off, but follow me. He's like, I, I say something to him about God because at this point now I have a, a relationship with God. I know that God is real. And now more than anything, like where I am today on April 17, 2022, I know without a shadow of a doubt God is real. But at the time, I I just knew God was real. He says something about God and calls him like a shim, basically, because now he's like queer. Mind you, before he wasn't queer. But this, this shit is so deep. And I just, I don't even feel like going in any deeper, but like, I should have known right there. Like you are talking about the God of the universe in a way that God does not speak about himself. But at the time I was like, I thought about it in a capacity that was just like, let me give him grace because let me just give him grace. But now I realized that that was God showing me like, this is a, this person, they, whether they don't belong to me right now or they're on a journey, they we unequally yoked. So anyhow, moving forward, um, growing in my relationship with Christ, I think even a little bit before even sending to Ron the pictures and stuff like that is when I heard the audible voice of God for the first time in my life. And this is around the time, I think this is in, I can't remember if I sent to Ron the pictures in May or June. I think it may have been June. It was around the time like the Black Lives Matter thing was like going on like very heavy again. Um, but I just remember before he reached out to me, it was like a random day and I'm standing in my bathroom or I'm like walking into my bathroom. And as I'm walking out or something like that, I'm like in the threshold of the door and in my right ear, I hear fast. And I had never in my life heard anybody talk about the audible voice of God upward until this season in life where I've actually like listened to testimonies and seen people like testify about the audible voice of God. But I had never heard the audible voice of God upward until that point. And let me explain how I knew without a shadow of a doubt it was God. Because this voice, it's a man's voice. It is resoundingly filled with profound truth, even with a one-liner. Resounding truth that feels like it's all around you like this. And it's deeply filled with compassion and love, but a sternness like a father. And that's how I knew that I knew that I knew that it was God. And 
when I heard it, I immediately, my, my spirit had cling to that word with so much immediacy. And I don't cling to things that are non-truth. Like I'll be sitting there and pondering, like, hmm, something's a little peculiar. Like I'll go like this to my chin or something like that, figuratively speaking, or sometimes really. But like, you know, it, it was so resoundingly true that my spirit just clang to it as soon as I heard it. And I told Steph, we need to fast. And we started fasting. And then afterwards is when Tehran wrote me and stuff like that. And then me and Steph started going through a bunch of attacks in the relationship. So like I said, we had not formally like experienced all the things that we had experienced before. Although there were things kind of like with the Popeye situation that was kind of showing itself like, hey, get get prepared. Like you're about to go through like, you know, some stuff. But I didn't know it was, I thought that I had already crossed over into green pastures. I didn't know that once you really have like a serious relationship with, with Christ, that like things sometimes and people don't say this people be like oh you're gonna come into christ and your life is gonna be so much better yes that is true however be it the oil the oil is costly the oil is costly and so just to like make sense of like the quality of how even real anointing oil is made the base for real anointing oil, the, the real base that you should use, anybody should use for real anointing oil is called sweet oil. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Give me one second. <laughs> it's sweet oil. And these oils are not, um, I never used to be an oil. I know I look like one of them oils and incense girls. I never was that type of girl. Okay. I, I really wasn't like, that wasn't my, my style. It's really God who's... The Holy Spirit has discipled me to show me how to make anointing oil, how to put things together, like literally. And like obviously using scripture and just making sure that I have like an understanding and relationship with Christ to like, you know, I'm not blasphemously like just standing before things and blessing them like, no, real relationship. So sweet oil, right, is if I remember correctly, olive trees or I guess they would be called olive trees. Sweet oil is made from olive oil. And the way that sweet oil is made, the reason it's different from like other oils, like extra virgin and all that different types of stuff is because I believe the olives that fall off are the ones that the first olives that fall off, they harvest them and then they press them specifically. It's something about the specifications of that part specifically, those, those like particular, like all those first olives that fall that get pressed in a particular way that for that reason it is the first fruits and when you use this oil specifically as the base for your anointing oil like anything or rather not like anything as scripture states everything that we have we should render back onto god get like basically almost like cain and abel not almost like like cain and abel and so um where abel was like you know shepherding the the fields and stuff like that or harvesting the fields he gives the best of the fruit back onto god whereas cain is like i'm gonna just give you i'm gonna just give you some shit you know how you gonna give your creator just some sh he made you bro and so it's it's there's a purity in giving back the best of what there's a purity in giving back the first and the best. And that's consistent scripturally and biblically. There was a reason I was saying that to make sense of the pressing of your character as you're getting closer to Christ. So people say like, oh, like you're going to have an amazing life. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have an amazing life because you're going to know without a shadow of a doubt who you are. And you very well could contingent upon the relationship, not the relationship, but the things that God says to you specifically. Like if he says you're going to have certain things, like I'm, I'm, you're destined to have this and this and this and this. And these are things that you, that align with your heart's desires. And he loves to give his children his heart's desires, but it, I'm not going to say it comes at a cost. He wants to make sure that you as his daughter or his son know how to actually steward the blessing. And if he has to get materialism out of you, if he has to get the world out of you, then there is a crushing and a pressing that comes with that so that you can be made over to wholeness 
and holiness, or rather holiness and wholeness. Because being that Christ bore the iniquity of all of man, we're already forgiven. We're already beloved. We're already washed. We're already clean. And so our holiness is, all, we're already made good once we come into covenant and, and accept the will. Once you come in, and there's no perfect way to accept the will or to accept the olive branch. You just say, yes, God, every day. It's not that you say yes perfectly and you start moving like a robot. You just try to be as obedient to the call that he has on your life as possible. You know, and it's an everyday work. It's an everyday journey until your journey is done. And the thing about it, you'll know that you're doing what God asks you to do as you're on the journey, because you may not have the million dollars, you may not have the babies, you may not have the husband, but the glory and the joy of the Lord will ruminate in your life. You'll be in a place sometimes where everything around you is damn chaos. And you'll just be like, God, I don't understand it. But I just say thank you anyways. Because there's an, he, he his word does not return unto him void. So you go to Romans 8, 38 through 30, uh, is it 28? I think it's Romans. Romans 8 is just fire altogether. Go ahead and read it literally. But Romans 8, 28 is like he works all things out for the good of those that love him. So you may not understand the chaos going on around you. You may not understand why your mom died, why your best friend died, why this happened, you know, the real stuff. You may not understand your poverty right now. You may not understand it. You may not understand. You may not understand the disrespect, the 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 mistreatment. You know, the 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 depravity of man. But when you are in relationship with Christ, He does not fail you. He's not gonna. He's not gonna forsake you. And so there's something in that that's being utilized utilize to make you the grounds for what He's doing to illuminate Himself illuminate Christ through us to the world because we are the light of the world. But those who get it, the girls who get it, get it, or those who get it, get it. And those who don't, well, we pray for y'all. <laughs> we pray for y'all. And so just back to like, you know, the pressing and the crushing of sweet oil, your first oil. We, we are the, we are the first fruit. God loves us so much. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. You understand what I'm saying? You are, is, is y'all hearing the gospel? If you hear the gospel, just say, I don't know, what what's the resounding sound that we should say of like, y'all, we picking up what is being put down. So sorry. I need to drink a little water. <clears throat> we need like a word that we can use. Right, amen. Say amen. You're right. Say amen in the congregation. That's that's absolutely it. I don't even gotta make up no other words. Say amen in the congregation. Somebody says say woo woo, holy ghost fire. I, I come into agreement with that too, period. Um okay, so now growing more in Christ testimony wise. Um oh my goodness. Oh, hold on real quick. Nah, because I literally said that, like, you know what I'm doing, bro. Come on now. Um, I'll just leave it open so the person can respond back. So, um, growing more in Christ. I kind of want to talk more about some of the attacks that we were going through, but Holy Spirit, I invite you into this space to just help me to navigate the rest of this conversation the way that you want me to. I submit my mouth and my tongue, my mind, my heart over to you, my will, my emotions, Lord. You navigate this how you see fit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And sorry if it seems redundant that I'm like praying again to like make sense of um how I'm like navigating this. It's just like I'm kind of getting just I'm getting distractions and I'm not trying to like be distracted, but it's also like my mom. So it's like I don't, you know. Oh, my mom, you know, <laughs> so, but I really just, I know that God told me to get on here and to um, share my testimony. So that's what I want to do. What else do I want to say? Um, I feel like there's like a good bit that is missing of what I wanted to touch on. So, hmm.
in some contexts, this could be considered a life update. Um, I'm, I'm really doing this testimony because God said to just come and do this testimony. So that's why I'm really here. Um, <clears throat> Moving forward to, I guess now, because I'm not really getting like where I should pick up from, so I'm just going to flow. I'm going to pick up from the ending of the relationship. I grew a lot in Christ in the relationship, and I grew exponentially getting out of the relationship and i don't think that that's by way of like stifleness by being in the relationship i think that the relationship that i had with said person was grounds for me to mature in christ in a lot of ways um but coming out of the relationship I, I got to know God in a way that, um, I think I would say in like former seasons, I resented a lot because I always wanted to have a relationship with God amidst not being worldly, but having, having somebody beside me so to speak. And I do not struggle with loneliness, but it is good to have a friend, especially if that friend is your man while you're growing in Christ. Y'all tell me if I'm a liar. Uh, somebody, somebody tell me if I'm a liar. Okay. Because there's something about that level of intimacy and then intimacy, or rather intimacy, and then intimacy, that is just profoundly beautiful. And so coming out of that was devastatingly hard, even though I was the one that said, I think we need to depart. Rather, we do need to depart. And the reason for that departure, I'm going to say now, the spiritual warfare was so freaking intense that the last couple of months and one day when he's actually ready to speak his truth because he's clearly not ready that he's in illusion delusion land and I pray he wakes the hell up no shade no tea to him we were not we were no longer equally yoked and granted it makes a lot of sense because we're not operating in God's perfect will for us. And when I say perfect, only he can make something perfect, period. We are living together. We are not married. Even though we're doing our best to not um, be like physically intimate and stuff, which we really were, honest to God, because we went from every day, baby, okay? Every day to like, maybe like once every month and not even like once every three months. And then like, if it was like a special occasion, like a little whoop, you know, <laughs> like something like that. But there was a lot of, he, he upheld that space with a lot of reverence. And I never felt that there was tension. I never felt that there was like, um, like he had a wandering eye or a, a, a lustfulness towards, um, exploring, you know, like, oh, I'm not getting it here. So I got to go do it somewhere else. Like his mind was not like that. And where people may feel that that's how his mind was. And maybe it seems peculiar because like he is in a new relationship, right? All of us who have eyes to see and ears to hear know what that is, but I'm going to leave that alone because I have respect. And I mean that genuinely, I have respect, but at the same time, or rather, at the same time, you can say what something is. You you can look at, like, you not fooling. You know, only a fool fools himself. I'll say that. That's what I'll say. That is what I'll say. That is what I'll say. And this is not me saying this by a way of, like, being shady, being petty, wanting the the relationship back or anything like that, no matter the fact that I did express that at a former time, I'm not, that's not how I move. 
If you happy over there, baby, go and be happy. Go and be happy. And so I just use this as the context to make sense of the way that the last that those last couple months of the relationship were, and when he's comfortable enough to like, you know, because he's a prophet. And I do believe that he is supposed to be a preacher, but he wasn't ready to surrender. And the reason he wasn't ready to surrender is because something really horrible happened in his family dynamic and that sent him. And it's kind of like what I said in the Beware of Envy video, tragedy, what tragedy does to people, they either get deeper in their relationship with Christ or they run away from God because they're like you. You, I don't know if you guys ever watched that, um, that what's it called? Awesome Powers and Goldmember video, not video, but movie and like Goldmember. I don't know if it's this one, but it's like, I think Michael Myers is singing like, daddy wasn't there. <laughs> and it's like, that's how people feel. Like people get so mad at God, even though he's literally right there in the midst of the situation, but they start to hate God because they're just like, where the fuck were you? Why did you let this happen? I don't understand. And it's like, being really, really real, especially for the context of the situation to which happened to him and his family dynamic. Before anything, I'll tell y'all this actually, factually, he, Steph saw what ended up transpiring. And I really pray that one day he gets the, the encouragement and the, the, the ferocity to really speak his truth, like his actual truth. Because like I said, there are parts of him that are genuinely brilliant and God wants to use, but only if he submits and he says he's ready and that's only when he decides. Steph saw what, what was, what ended up happening when he expressed it to his parents who I love very, very, very much. They did not, they basically brushed it off because Steph had got it as a dream. They brushed it off and was like, oh, it's just a dream. It wasn't just a dream. And I think with that lack of um, affirmation by his own parents, I think that that really, that thwarted his confidence that he was who God said he was. And you have to get to a place, it's never just a dream. You have to get to a place where you know that you know that you know that God spoke. But also, where I am right now, as far as relationship with Christ and the Holy Spirit, is so different from where it was at that time. And so I think even for him as well, it was like, the attack was so severe that it was like, what, what is going on? You know? And that is deeply understandable, like deeply, deeply understandable. So, um, wait, why are y'all laughing? I don't know. But anyways, so moving forward, there is, that happens. Relationship is now going down, even though it had been like pretty consistent and good the whole time. But those last couple months after that tragedy, it was just like becoming, what was really a, another part of the issue was, and God had showed me this in a dream as well, contingent to him, his comprehension was just going, and I'm going to say this too, we live in New York, right? Niggas be buying weed, and I'm not just talking about this in context to him, I'm just saying this in general. We live in New York, and niggas is buying Dykeman weed. You're buying Dykeman weed. I don't even think I need to say anymore. Like when, but I'll say this though. And I'm, this is me like just being like humorous about like just this from like a, a intellectual perspective. When I think about weed and I, I used to smoke weed. I mean, even right now I look like a person who definitely used to smoke weed, but weed is not like my thing, but like I definitely was smoking weed. Air, let's take it from an aerial view. Let's raise it up, right? And look at it from like sky high priority. We're driving to Dykeman to buy weed that is grown in basements or wherever this weed is grown. However, it's chemically treated to ingest it in our bodies, to hit our brain cells, our synapses, to be 
overly relaxed. To the extent of what? To escape existentialism or to escape existential pain? I'm, I'm high for 10, 15. I, speaking personally, I wasn't even getting high no more. I wasn't even getting smacked no more. That's when I really knew. It's it's quiet for weed. If this shit can't this, this can't this can't fill the void. <laughs> this cannot Dykeman weed. This ain't no flown out Jamaican Kush. Matter of fact, I just was in Jamaica. Don't nobody please don't smoke that weed out there either because the spiritual wickedness that's going on there right now, it looked like a place, you know, when the sun is out and buns is out. But let the sunset come, and that sunset, it's a whole different atmosphere. It's a whole different atmosphere. It's a whole different atmosphere. Especially those who belong to Christ, because you're the actual threat. Those who are asleep, Satan just keeps saying, keep sleeping, baby. Shh. Goodbye, baby. On the street top. Okay? But those who are awake... You're like, oh, Lord. And they see you, and you see them. But the only way you're going to fight <clears throat> what you can see is if you in that word of God, knowing that you're coming against um, Beelzebub. I don't know how to say that one, but the, the demon of flies. Or you coming against succubus and incubus, which is those spirits that come in the night to come sleep with you and sow demonic plants against your destiny. Or Leviathan. Or Momen, which is the demon of greed. Or Molik, which is the demon of child sacrifice. You got you got to know what you're fighting. People be like, oh, I don't want to pay attention to demons and spiritual warfare. Baby, you're going to get ate up. 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 Especially the children of God who don't want to abide in being a child of God. You're going to get fucked up. And you're going to start projecting this anger on God like God is the reason that you get it messed up. And God said, come abide in me. I'm trying to show you something. Don't you see how the world is moving? They keep talking about the same things over and over and over. This big illusion of distraction. Talking about the same celebrities for the damn 10, 10 years. We've been talking about the same celebrities. We need a us. And then every so often something happens like Will Smith smacking Chris Rock, which he definitely should have did. I know him and Jada went home and had some bomb sex like they haven't had sex in a long time because Tiffany said it. And before Tiffany even said it, I said, hello, like, wake up. It's wake up season. OK, it's it's literally it's if you can't feel that resurrection. Good luck. <laughs> Not even good luck. God bless. God bless. May God cover and keep you in this hour if you belong to him. And I pray you wake up. Because how will you survive what is to come? And I don't even just mean it like all apocalyptic, like, oh, like the world is coming to an end. But we're coming, we're coming to an end of something. Like, come on, you could feel that, right? You could feel you could feel that. Can can we feel that or 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 am I making that up? Y'all let me know. And I don't need nobody to 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 say it to appease me. I, I say that I say this in my own comfort of my. Sometimes I just sit down, I cross my leg, and I say, <laughs> "Somebody said it a long time ago on Twitter, but it's like every day we fall shorter and shorter from God's grace." And it's like funny because God's grace is like ever enduring. You know, His love is so beyond and profound. But it's like, nah, like y'all peep the vibes. Y'all peep the vibes of the spiritual wickedness rising up. pestilence rising up but people don't want to abide in the word of god so they wonder why divorce is on the rise they wonder why niggas is dogs they wonder why the church can't get it together brick and mortar church but the church is inside but when people don't have an actual relationship with christ what will get done what will what will what will actually be blessed what will actually have the hand of god on it where hearts are are revived people are moved to i think the word is metanoia to to completely turn 
from their sin. What moves people to, people don't even feel accountable enough to their sin to repent. I, I, oh snap. I got so much, I got, I, I got a few other things to say. People don't even feel accountable enough to this. That's why they don't want to surrender. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I don't have to repent. Like, yeah, sometimes I curse or like, you know, I may take a little extra of that or something. But I don't need to repent. Okay. That's what you think. Read the book of Judges. Everybody at the end. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. What was accomplished? Man toiled in vain. And if you can't feel that in the atmosphere right now, I don't know what you're feeling. I'm going to pray for you, but maybe you need a six feet, maybe 12. I don't need the illusion, delusion, stupid to idiocracy rubbing off on here. I don't. I don't need it. And what really bothers me, and I, I say that part humorously, but really those types of people. If you ask me quite genially and and honestly, got traits of narcissism and sociopathism in them. That that deep level and lack of empathy for humankind. I'm looking at you a certain type of way. I'm, I'm looking at you a certain type of way. And me and you, we unequally yoked. And those people who even like play church. Please don't come over here because if God tell me to tell you repent and I am not lying and I say, God, use my whole vessel is surrendered to you. I'm going to tell you to repent and they act like I just said the worst thing I I ain't curse you, your mama. I I ain't do none of that. I said, repent. So now let's move forward. I've talked a little bit about like the relationship, the ending of the relationship, the relationships that I was in, how I like came to Christ and so on. So on my sister going to the hospital, praying, developing closer relationship with Christ. And if you watch my other videos, you hear a lot of like these other nuanced parts be filled in. So Really, my videos are for people who have been on the journey with me or are interested in my journey because my journey, I share it so transparently because I know that there are other people experiencing life in the same way that I am, you know, and I'm going to leave it like that and then come back to a more profound thing about that there afterwards. But let me drink some water. I wish that today was the day that I was going to talk about jamaica and talk about the intensity of the spiritual warfare that i experienced there but today is not that day because it is too deep and too expansive to talk about but what i was fighting there was an elevated version of O through my uncle i didn't know that my enemy this whole time for the last seven years was my uncle uncle oh my goodness hold on real quick i'm so sorry Hello. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much for asking, but no, I'm okay. All right, love you later. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know. I don't understand that, but okay. It means well. Anyhow, um... Found out that my uncle was, and it's so crazy because I made the video called Beware of Household Enemies, or no, not Beware of Household Enemies, Beware of Envy and Jealousy. And envy usually comes by a way of somebody who is really watching you very closely. And that means they're close enough to watch you closely. This Negroid. There's no words to describe the atrociousness of this man's character and the the depth of the environmental witchcraft that this man is involved in by way of using 
being a monitoring spirit and operating through different things to monitor me. I'm not a person you need to monitor because I say, I tell the truth all the time. So you're trying to look for something. You're trying to look for like the crack. Baby, all of me is cracked all the time. I'm telling the truth all the time. I'm so, it's like, I'm so transparent that they are trying to look for the flaw and the transparency. I'm not hiding anything and you want to monitor me. But what I did find out more than anything, this person, uncle, has a rat-like spirit. And rats, any rat in your dream, any spider in your dream, any scorpion, snake in your dream, wolf, dog, demonic attack. Demonic attack. Demonic attacks. Okay? So that's demonic. Found out that this person has a, a, a rat spirit. And not just a rat spirit. I mean, you, you're deep into witchcraft and, and the occult. And God was showing me from the beginning, because I had a dream about him, like maybe like 10 days that I was into my trip, but I didn't understand the dream at first. So I just, un, more than an undercover hater. That's a, that's a, this was so deeply demonic. It was like, it didn't even make no sense for real. It really didn't make no sense. But what did make sense about it is a lot. And this is why I know God has called me to this platform to be reformed and speak in my new renewed mind in Christ and to speak about these specific spaces that people don't talk about so, so much. <clears throat> so sorry. And I'm going to timestamp this when I go into the description box. So 146, I'm going to talk about this level of spiritual warfare. This, this man, oh, that's what I was going to say. A lot of people, and those of you even on this live right now who experience stuff like this, like those, these levels of demonic attacks, especially in your dreams or, or things like that, that means that the destiny set before you is glorious, glorious. We see a lot of people get things by being in the world. You know, they, oh, I manifested my destiny. I manifested this man into my life. I'm a bad bitch. I'm a boss ass bitch. Okay. No problem with that, baby girl. You go do your thing, Glenn Coco. But those of us who belong to Christ and we can't seem to figure out why our lives are in cycles and we can't seem to figure out why, you know, two years ago I, I'm, I was in the situation and I'm here again. I just, I can't seem to get it right. Like what is going on? Those of us, it may look peculiar. We may look like we failing, like we're not smart or we're making bad decisions, even though we put our best genial effort and we've been praying and we've been fasting and things still seem to be, you are doing a work. You're doing a work that's, that's, that's fixing the bloodline. You're doing different work. You're doing, you're not, you're not, you're set apart. You're a peculiar person. You're not in the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And because you are now not of the world by your own choice to trust God in full obedience. Maybe not perfect obedience, but full obedience. Hear that again. Not perfect obedience, but full obedience to the capacity to which you are understanding God because your intentions and your heart and your motives are pure. When I tell you the devil is going to fight like hell to renew that contract with you, he going to fight like hell because he's like, dang, I'm losing another one. He goes, he goes in and I'm not going to lie. It is exhausting, even in Christ. And people like to say, oh, God is my shield and my buckler and my refuge. Yes. But spiritual warfare is exhausting. Ask the prophets in the Bible. Ask the new prophets, us. Who are have eyes to see and ears to hear? If y'all don't lie and say y'all don't be tired and weeping sometimes at the just depravity and the 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 the, the, the grief 
of like, what the fuck is going on right now? Why is this going on? Why am I going through this? I'm trying everything in my freaking ability with you, God. I am collaborating with you and I'm still in so much pain. And I'm not even, you know, it was one thing when I was in the world and in sin, I have repented. I have renounced. I have prayed. I have fasted. What is the problem? The bloodline. The bloodline. That's why you can't move forward. That's why you don't have financial breakthrough. Because they're like, the girls are like buying luxury. Um, I just got a new luxury apartment. You guys aren't thinking about luxury apartment. You're like, I don't, why am I paying the white man? No shade. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, my political black shit. But like, why am I paying the white man to live in his luxury apartment when I want to buy a house that I build? God said he won. My, my God is the God who owns the riches on a thousand. What, what is that scripture? But y'all know what I'm trying to say. My God said that I'm to build a house. And Satan is fighting like hell because he knows that house is going to have the glory of God. It made me emotional now. That house is going to have the glory of God in it because you said, you said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the devil is going to do everything. He's going to make brother, mother, sister, let, let the devil enter them so that things can keep falling down. You better stand on the word of God. You better stand in who God is. Don't, don't look to the left or to the right of what your mother, brother, sister, husband, bro, it don't matter. Go forward and upward. That's where our help comes from. Your best days are ahead of you. Look ahead and look upward because that's where your help comes from. Don't be overly, and I, I don't want to like, just like be short about it. You know how I said earlier, like, chaos all around, but you still give God praise and thanks and acknowledgement in it because it has to pass through your hands and you're working all things out for the good. And so when you know that you have repented deep in your heart, metanoia, you change the action. You don't even look at porn. You don't even masturbate. Not to say you probably don't think about it, but you don't do any of that. You don't smoke. You barely even take a drink. You're not even clubbing. Not even, you know, there's just things that, <laughs> some of these things naturally dropped off of you just like I don't fuck I just don't care to do it no more I just don't but now your life is so kind of a bit isolated it's a bit like you know lonely you know the consecration is a bit lonely and you're just like all right now lord community a little more money companionship and he says, wait, not that he doesn't want to give it to you, but he just says, wait. And you're like, you see him, you're like, and you waited. And then there's more waiting. And amidst that, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, maybe more fasting, maybe more praying, maybe more repentance, more renouncing, more exposure of the reality of what's on the bloodline. So now you're like, you thought you were at the edge of breakthrough and then you weren't, you were at the breakthrough of a breakthrough, but you're not at the breakthrough. That's really the breakthrough that you were looking for that show that you made it. I'm here for those people because that is my life. You guys have grown with me for years. Those of you that have been on the journey with me for years. You let me know by what you have seen if I should live how I'm living in this one. I've seen people surpass me, not even to be away, by doing sheer idiocracy. The truth does not pay well. In fact, it costs you and could cost you your life. Hello, Resurrection. Sunday. Yet and still I am based here because what does it profit me to gain the whole world and lose my soul? I don't think very much. I just I just don't see it as valuable. So if I have to stay here, and this part makes me emotional because it's hard sometimes to live like this, to live where there are rats and there are roaches. My fridge is broken. I'm using my freezer as a fridge.
This level of poverty is painful. And I think for some people who have known me, they are pleased by this level of poverty and destruction in my life. Because when I was growing up, we grew up middle class, me and my sister and my mom and my dad, so to speak. But we were poor then too. The atmosphere was barren, no love, no hugs. So it was always poverty. It was always that. And I've had a composure and maintained a genuineness and sense of identity through it all, through that level of poverty and abandonment and rejection and bad relationships, maintained identity. Through psychological and spiritual warfare, I maintained my identity. I didn't move too fast because I never wanted to leave my community behind. And some people could say, was it worth it? Yes. Because there are people right now who are hurting very badly and need somebody to speak to that pain by acknowledging their pain. And everybody fakely does it when, no shade, but like y'all peep the vibes. Like when I come on here and I say something, how is it that my videos are still doing pretty okay? I would say, because we, we've seen YouTube that aside from the algorithm, the whole thing is like, people's views are dropping down unless they're like the super, super big YouTubers where like the young people are very impressionable and watching. Some of us older folk who have been here a while, them views is dropping and they're still doing the same content, lifestyle, home, beauty. And those things are great. We do need a place where we can like enjoy those things. But like, I'm talking about real shit and my views is kind of fakely matching they views because people want to hear real stuff. And I don't think that I'll be the first and I definitely don't think that I'll be the last, but I would love if everybody else woke up and started or rather not woke up. Cause I think they're awake. They just, maybe people are too afraid to say what's really hurting them. I'm not scared to say it no more. I'm not scared because I know where my help comes from and my God always provides. I never seen the righteous forsaken, but I'll say that this is, it hurts. I'll say it. I'm not going to be no fake anybody and definitely not no fake Christian and act like this is easy. It's not, it's not, you know, and everybody thinks like, you know, you start building a relationship with Christ and you'll get the home and you'll get the husband. And I don't know. It happens like that for some people. Maybe they didn't have to fight as hard for things on their bloodline. I don't know. But sometimes you, some people have literally given, (sighs) follow me here, follow me here, follow me here. Some people are literally expressing that their thanks is to God when really God was not in that move. They're just saying, thanks be to God because of the way that it looks piously they they take on that 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 vernacular that language to admonish a space that really they've manifested and then they just say glory to god that is some scary shit (laughs) that and i've seen this happen so many times and it bothers me so bad it's like and i i I wonder if you guys have seen this over the course of the last couple years people are being blessed by having children children will always be a blessing them children are becoming an accessory to the aesthetic. And one day I'm gonna have a deeper conversation about about that. Y'all using the children as an accessory to beautify your life in a way that says or wants to say, I made it, I finally made it, I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I have the house. And it's really to shit on your haters. Let me tell you, Sade, I don't have haters. Those people hate themselves. And I pray for them, literally. They And this is why they're always trying to pull me apart. Because they're like, why does she not hate herself? We're trying so hard to make her hate herself. I don't hate myself because I know I'm not perfect. I don't hate myself because God loves me. And I love God. And that's the only person that has a heaven and a hell to put me in. And 
without being expansive. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. You know, even like, and, and follow me when I go here with this as well. Me and my sister were having a conversation about beauty. I don't know if it was last night or two nights ago. And um, while people compliment me a great deal now for being, you know, by society standards for a black woman, and maybe across the scales as well, so to speak, beautiful. This was not, this, this is a new arena for me as well, so to speak, you know? When I was younger, I got bullied horribly, unsolicitedly bullied for being ugly, <laughs> you know, and being strange. <laughs> and... You know, even when I was younger, I, I really did not care for pe the only person's affection that I cared for was my mom's, which, you know, I'm so blessed because now I have it. She's the one trying to call me down and, you know, like, shut up, you know, she's trying to do something nice for me. And I'm like, mom, it's okay. I already took care of like, you know, I took care of myself. You don't got to take care of me. Do what you got to do, ma'am. But it's like, you know, I only cared about everybody else's opinion about how I looked. Did I ask you, sweetie? Did I, I came to, I know what I looked like when I left the house wearing my, this mixed matched outfit and all this stuff. I always was very, um, eccentric, so to speak, and different in a lot of ways, awoke <laughs> or awake, woke, so to speak. Um, and that really shined out and that irritated people. And the thing about it is I never, the same way I don't ask people to subscribe. I, ne I don't even ask people to be my friend. I don't do stuff like that. I never did stuff like that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but that's just never my style. And so when people come, especially when I was younger and definitely did not benefit from attractive privilege or anything like that, like you're coming to tell me things about myself that I didn't ask you. And now my retrospect for it is like, oh, y'all saw the light. Y'all saw what it was. And y'all were like trying to figure out what it was and what you weren't. And it's like, I'm not here to challenge your identity. If anything, more than anything, I just like, I I want people to feel encouraged by my presence and not like in a way that's like, <laughs> so this hilarious, I think Christians are like the most hilarious, like real Christians are like the most hilarious people. I think we are, I think we have humor down to a, a spot that is like very different from any other kind of humor. And I saw this this Christian TikTok that was somewhere, my, I think my sister sent it to me or somebody. And the guy is like, it's like an arrogant Christian. He's like preaching for somebody and stuff. And it's like, I, I'm saying, I wish I could really recall it. I can't, but all that said, I'm not like an arrogant, like person where like my undertone on my back motives, I don't have motives. I do not have agendas. So like, I'm not like thinking to myself, like, well, because of who I am, it'll encourage you to be more of who you're supposed to be. No, if I'm not your cup of tea, don't use me as your reference point. Don't use me as like a, a space for, for where you are to get to where you want to be. That's okay. That's okay. But if you do feel encouraged by my presence or you enjoy my presence and you feel like it's a positive impact, motivating force within your life, Aaliyah said it first, God bless you, baby girl. I pray that you are just uh, living in heaven beautifully and wonderfully. I was thinking about Aaliyah earlier today. I feel like that's why she had to get taken out, but not even to be aware. And I know that's random, but like she was so pure. And, and I know like she wasn't like overly pure. We we know some of the bad context of what she went through in the industry and so on. Like, but like, yeah. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I would hope that she's in heaven. But all that said, like, if people think that I'm a beautiful, motivating force within their life, awesome, amazing. God bless you. And I pray that, you know, with whatever you get from me and use from me, like, you use it for the glory of God and the glory of, like, being unique in Christ the way Christ called you to be. That's it. That's it. You don't even got to thank me. You don't even got to say, oh, Sade put me on. I never look for that. I never, I never do that. And if you even notice back when I was like doing like YouTube videos for hair, like I'll tell you, Ivy's flip over method, amazing, perfection. Like, wow, amazing. You, I, I did it a bit differently, but like you did some, you changed how, I mean, in, in a certain context, like how we assimilated into like white culture or like, you know, 
pretty culture, so to speak, but you also gave us the freedom to understand how to have a blendable weave in a way that we had not known. That's monumental. That's amazing. You know, sociology had the idea of how to gr grade hair in a way that was, you know, concise to the point. You get what you get and you, you go on, you know, in under 10 minutes, seven minutes, if it's a, if it's a simpler video, thank you. I'm grateful for this space and I'm grateful for the ladies that have forged away in beauty or in any capacity that have helped me to grow. Shameless Maya, you know, when she was really shameless, oh man, she put a fire in me that was like, don't be anything but yourself. Don't be anything but yourself. And I need, my young black self needed that needed that affirmation and she's not even like a black she's like i mean what is she she's like filipino and like i think her dad is black i can't exactly remember so forgive me but like it's not like she's like a black girl how some of us on here are black girls but her saying that out of her mouth needed that i'm trying to think of other influencers um shan budram her conversations around sex and sexual identity and sexual health, necessary. They changed the platform. Even Tiana Empowers, Ryan Fan, Makai, when Makai was making videos in context to just like, what did Makai not do, okay? My girl from the UK was giving the girls the actual factuals about black history and blackness and black womanhood and what bitches should not settle for. I stand. I love deep reverence and love. How much more than Julesy, Kim, how much more in Christ would these women be powerful? How much more in Christ would these women forge a hedge of not only a safe of protection and safety and community? How much more, how much more untouchable until God says it's time for us to leave would we be? It's for the first time in 10 years, so to speak, or in, in the last half a generation, half a century, that we've seen Black women be able to navigate beauty in a way that we never got to before, except the 70s when the Black Power Movement came, and also simultaneously the Jesus Movement, which is where a lot of revival was happening again because people were waking up. But that's neither here nor there. Coming back to this. We're seeing black beauty in a way where it's like, you can do your hair in Marley locks, wigs. Like there's so much, we got to touch so much that we never got to touch. But then you got, you got people like my, my former God sister who wants to pull me apart for utilizing beauty as if I'm being fake while I've always been real. And now you're leaving me with a complex that you actually have because you don't know how to navigate being uniquely who you're called in Christ. But there's so much here to tap into. And there's so much of God who never leaves or forsakes us to tap into. On a deeper level, Going back to what I kind of said formally, even though I don't have the back context to say it again, but y'all already know if you're following. <clears throat> if you use me as a reference point to navigate your identity, God bless you. And just, I, I only pray that what you're using and how I show up authentically to just for you to better show up authentically. But don't use me as the reference point if you're using me as the reference point to like jump off of me like a trampoline and then jump on me like a trampoline. Like I did like, I don't know how to really explain it, but somebody is picking up what I'm putting down, <laughs> you know, stuff like that is just, it's so, 
It's backwards, it's annoying, it's ugly, and it's very dumb. And this is why I don't F with demonic people. Because honestly, I really think of them as idiots. I really do. Like the, the, the things that you're doing are just really damn dumb. I kind of went on a bit on a tangent, but I want to go back to um, this one other part that I want to speak to. So I kind of spoke about, I went through the dynamic of the relationship, how that helped me grow in Christ. Um, pressing the hardships of being a Christian. I want to talk about, I was going to talk a bit about Jamaica. guys. I spoke about how my uncle was really the one who is this destructive rat in my life and how I didn't speak so much in detail about how it was exposed to me. Um, but what I was saying to that was a lot of the people, and I hope I completed that thought, but if not, I'm going to complete it right here. A lot of you who are on this live right now, so I'm like, it's a little like crunchy in the corners because my lipstick. But um, a lot of you who are experiencing those levels of delay or backwardness or like cycles have glorious destinies in front of you. So that was something that I was expressing. And so you're trying to figure out why you can't move forward. And it really has nothing to do with what you're not doing. It has more to do with what God is breaking off of, of your bloodline. And so it's basically like the Israelites in the wilderness. And while they're disobedience is really what caused them to be in there for 40 years when they were only supposed to be there 40 days. It's more about taking you in a certain direction because of what you're coming up against. And one day I'm going to do a deeper video about that. I want to say this though. I want to talk about when I got off of my flight. And I told y'all in my last video that my flight was called 1957. Holy Spirit just literally told me not to talk about this. Okay, never mind. Changing direction. I really wanted to talk about this. I'll say this just so that whenever I am allowed to talk about this, um, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I want to talk about, I wanted to share with you guys what happened with my dad when I got on the flight. I mean, not got, not got on the flight. When I departed and he picked me up from the airport. That's what I want to talk about. But Holy Spirit said, no, not to talk about that. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, I just heard that I'm done. <laughs> so, uh, and that's not me saying that for myself, because y'all know, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be on here short, and I'd be on here long. I'd be on here like three hours. But I pretty much said most of, like, I guess the beginning part of my testimony. I think at another time, I'll talk more about, like, how I grew in Christ. And I think it will have a lot to do about this trip to Jamaica and the depths of the spiritual warfare, the strategy that God gave me to fight in the spirit against this person, and just how, wow, I mean, wow, just wow, just wow. Strategy from God is so important, so important. When you're coming against big principalities, please do not just fight that on your own. You need to invite the Holy Spirit and invite the power of God into your life to help you get through that because these are not, you, you don't need to be scared of what you're coming against, but you need to be prepared and equipped. If you're not equipped to come against the giants in the land, there's nothing else to say. So yeah, um, I'm going to go through the comments. I'm going to go up to the top and come down and just kind of like speak on what catches my eye the most. Um... I'm so thankful and so grateful that you guys sat here with me to listen to what I spoke about because I was not expecting to get on here whatsoever, 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 um, whatsoever. Um, but I do pray and I, and I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here. I'm thankful that you guys are here. And I do pray that this, what I shared here was, um, a blessing and just helpful in any capacity in any way, because I, I know that I kind of went on a bit of a tangent and I know I kind of shared what seems to feel like some things a bit random. Um, I, I'd go, I'd be in agreement with that. So yeah, so I'm going to go through these comments and see what y'all are saying. Oh. 
Oh, it won't go all the way up. So sorry, y'all. My head wrap is from Shein, and it was like, I think this was like two or three dollars. Girl, I bought this like a couple of months ago when I was like, I mean, I haven't really been shopping like that, but like at all. Um, but I did tell you guys how I bought like something the other day when I was in Jamaica from Poshmark. And when it came, it was a prophetic declaration to show like God showing me like, um, like the arrow of the enemy is broken. And it's so interesting because you know how on Poshmark, well, those of you who are familiar with Poshmark, when you buy something from Poshmark, you can like write a, like say thank you to the person who like sent it out to you. And so the guy who sent it to me, cause it's like a, I like to wear like a lot of men's clothes. The guy who sent it to me was like a Caucasian man from Oklahoma and his picture is like him and like these two other like kids. And I, I, I don't know why, like there are some people that like, you just need to look at them and you already can see the glory of God on them. Like, even if they don't know they belong to Christ, you see Christ in them. So, and people have been saying this, like, they'll see me in, like, people's comments for, like, other YouTube videos and stuff. When I write something, I always, I usually, more times than not, say, like, may God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I always make sure to say in the mighty name of Jesus, especially if I feel led. Not every single time, but more times than not. And so I wrote him and I was like, you know, thank you so much for my item, it came right on time. May God bless you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. And then he followed me on Poshmark. And I was just like, I know that's small and I don't need anyone to follow me on Poshmark because I'm not selling anything on Poshmark. I keep like putting my um closet on vacation hold, but it was just like, the Christ in you invites people closer. It, 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 it really... It really is a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, put this on Shein. <laughs> um, let's see. Simply see, I say, said... And hopefully I'm saying your name, your um, handle correctly. You said, weed is what opened my mind to hear God, not going to lie. Girl, same. <laughs> like, I remember when me and Steph was smoking. Like, when I say I could hear God, like, I'm, I'm not going to front like we was not hearing God while also smoking weed. But you're not supposed to be smoking weed. And I'm not trying to say that in, a, like, a, a way of, like, you're not supposed to be smoking weed. But you're not supposed to be smoking weed. Like, you don't be involved in sorcery, pharmacia, all that jazz. But... Today's not the video for that, so. Somebody said I'm a smoker. It keeps me grounded. I don't have too much to say to that. Um, I wish I could have gone all the way up, but I didn't. I It won't let me. Someone said coyote. Hi, tis. That's like that band, but I can't pronounce that name properly, so forgive me. But you said my boyfriend literally had a life-changing awakening this year after binge smoking. Started for the wrong reason, but God scared his ass straight. LOL. <laughs> um, he brought me way closer as well. God bless y'all. Continue to grow closer in Christ. And there's no perfect way to grow close to Christ. Just do the do the walk every day, girl. Just do the walk every day. Somebody said, Do you attend church? No, not at this time. I don't have a church home. I don't know. I you know what's so funny? I went into um Bay Plaza Mall yesterday. I got so like people are so interesting. I'll say that. Um, I got a lot of, and follow me when I say this, cause I'm saying this just in the context of to make sense of like where I'm going with what I'm saying. 
I got a lot of compliments yesterday and I, this is my first time ever doing my hair like this. Like I just, you know, I was just trying something new, you know, when you're like going through stuff, you just try new things. And, um, this, I had stopped at one of these like jewelry kiosks and this guy, he, he tried to like, he was trying to like talk to me and it was very interesting because this is the first time like a Christian guy like has tried to, and notice I said Christian guy, not man of God, a Christian guy has tried to speak to me. And I feel like that's significant in its own right, because this is the first time I'm always, men are always more times than not trying to speak with me. But this was the first time that a Christian guy tried to speak with me and um, attractive, tall, tall, dark, and handsome. And not like, like for real tall, tall, dark, and handsome. And um, he, inv he was telling me about his church, um, which is called like glory in Christ, I think in the Bronx. And so he was like telling me about it, but the conversation was just like, so interesting. It's kind of like laughable, but not in a way that's like me being mean, like, Oh, it's laughable. It's, funny because he because of where I am in Christ and how God has like made me over as a woman of God on her way because a woman of God is a woman of God is a woman of God but it doesn't mean that you are perfect you know it doesn't mean that but being that I am the way that men approach me is so different now and I can see their, it's not even so much that I can see their motives because I can, I've always been able to like see those parts, but their intentions will fall off in front of me. So like their confidence for like trying to like get my number or go any further will fall off because it's like, she ain't somebody to play around with. And it's like, good, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like only come here if you are ready, you know, only come here if you're ready. Yeah. Every day we stray further and further from God's light. <laughs> yes. That's what I was talking about earlier. Shyaline, you said you can feel the thickness in the air of those who don't believe in anything and are just existing. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Very frustrating. Very frustrating that people are so asleep. My method of reading the Bible, I want to go get, I don't know which bag my mom put my Bible in, but I recently, not recently, I think back in the ending of December, I had bought a one year Bible. And when I first bought it, I did not like this Bible. I just was like, I don't, I don't like this Bible, like the way that it was set up. I wanted like a regular standard Bible, but, and I was going to like give it away to somebody, but God told me to keep the Bible. And now I understand why, because I'm not going to say that I have a, a short attention span, but sometimes it is hard for me to sit in front of the Bible and like, like the actual physical Bible and read it because the words are like so small. And with the one year Bible, it has a part for the Old Testament, a part for the New Testament and a Psalm and a proverb. And you can read two like Old Testament and a Psalm in the day and then New Testament and proverb at night or something like that. And it's, it's like a devotional, you know, and I don't know if you've ever had a devotional before. One of the devotionals I really like is called Whispers of Hope. And the other devotional I like is called Mm, what is it called? In my phone, so I can look into my. It's by Sarah Young. I think it's called Jesus Calling. Yeah, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. Real, another really good devotional. Every time I buy that devotional for myself, though. For some reason, I end up having to give it away. So God has just kept me in the Whispers of Hope devotional, and I've just held on to that. And so 
that devotional is really good if you're not ready for a Bible and you just kind of want to like tiptoe into your relationship with Christ. And then if you're ready for a Bible, I would say get the one year, the one year Bible and the pink hardcover one. I think it's about, I just sent it to one of my best friends last night. Um, let me tell you guys how much it is. It is 2871, and this is what it looks like. So if anybody is interested, um, and I would definitely recommend um, the hardcover one. And get yourself some colored pencils and pen, colored markers or highlighters and stuff. That really helps as well. Really, really helps. And also, when you're reading the Word of God, invite the Holy Spirit. You know, ask God to, like, help you to understand the words. Um, ask him what you should like read, ask him what you should turn to and stuff. That really helps a lot. The thrift queen said, is your sister a believer too? Yes. I'm so sorry. Yes, she is. She's not as mature in Christ. And I don't mean that like shadily. The truth is that she's not, but she is a believer and it's taken her a while she has, <laughs> like, even upward to the other day, she said that she was still looking at, like, tarot stuff a little bit. Um, and, you know, that has a chokehold on the culture and the people. And she said that God scared her ass straight to the point where she said, okay, I'm literally done. Like, literally. So, you know, everybody's on their journey. But she is a believer. But she's not as mature or made over. And, you know, it's a process. So, you know, I just encourage her. And I just... I'm just patient for her journey. And when I can be around, I'm around. But when I can't, I'm not. Diva Star Trek 2008 says, can you talk more about monitoring spirits? Yes, but this is not the video for it. But in short, monitoring spirits are people who operate in heavy occultish witchcraft. Um... And there are lots of different pe different types of monitoring spirits, but these are people who don't ever underestimate a monitoring spirit. They can use demonic mirrors. They use cauldrons. They are people who use voodoo. They do lots of different things to um, make sure your destiny is messed up. There are people that will also um, do like witchcraft to like have you have sex in your dreams, like different types of stuff. So this is why it's good to, you know, read Ephesians 6 before bed and put on the full armor of God, especially the helmet of salvation, which is the deliverance of ruin. Thank you, Christ Jesus, for having us to have a deliverance from ruin so that, you know, when you're sleeping, whatever the enemy is planning, it, it you already, you're sleeping with the armor of God on because when you're sleeping, your spirit man is awake. And so, oh, it's so deep. Th these are the parts where I say, Certain ministers that you guys should watch on YouTube is Tiffany Montgomery, Kevin Ewing, I think is how you say his name. I watch him a lot. Isaiah Salvador is on fire for Christ. Um, there's like this Russian guy. His name is like Vlad something. Um, J what is his name? Jason Wilson, I believe. There's a lot of young people right now on fire for God. Um, and I pray that they come up on your timeline. And I'm going to put some of those people in the description box. I don't usually fill out my description box, but I'm going to go ahead and do that um, today. Um, so you guys can have the resources and the, the tools utilized for those spaces. Um, Ruby Toussaint. I hope I said your name right. You said, I know the feeling. Shout out. God does not play about me either. Her point blank period. Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but it looks like it's Mink IV. And it says, sometimes God himself allows suffering to make us more like Christ. Yep, absolutely. And people don't like to say those parts. Y'all better come on here and preach the real gospel, okay? They better come on here and start preaching the real gospel. But then there's a point where the suffering is like, happening over and over and over again. And that's when you know that you're in like a cycle and that needs to be broken because God also doesn't call us to be in cycles. And so you got to really seek the Holy Spirit and see what's in the bloodline because some of these things are not things that you have done on your own by unrepentant sin or active sin. It's just by a way of things that, you know, 
the devil is mad that you're getting closer to God and he don't want you to walk in your your destiny. So that level of discernment is also necessary and needed because you'll be walking around being a believer in Christ and living a horrible, miserable life thinking like, well, my life is supposed to be this. I'm supposed to be in poverty. I'm supposed to, you know, live like this. And that's not what God called you to called you to either. And this is why dwelling and getting in the secret place is so important because that's where God tells you all the sensitive things and the important things about who you are and what you're called to do. Um, sorry to like end it like that. I just didn't remember. I didn't know what else to say. I'm like getting like really, really tired. Dominique Rochelle, girl, exhausted to the point of wanting God to come get me. Girl. Girl. Come get me. It's ghetto down here. It's ghetto. It's badly ghetto. It's like, if it's ghetto now, right? And we're seeing like a, a huge decline in moral morality. How much more? <laughs> How much more? How much more? Like I'd be like, and I know some people don't believe in rapture doctrine. I so I'm gonna keep it stack with you. I don't even know if I'm being taken up in the rapture because. From what it's looked like, if I'm understanding correctly of the things that God has talked to me about, and God, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you can you can come get me like you like Elijah acts and like Enoch just okay, but um, I think I'm gonna be here during the Great Tribulation. This is just something that I feel. I do not want to be, but something makes me feel like that when that time comes. So yeah. Um, I know that's right. She is building a righteous house. Go ahead and claim it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, like, skip down some. I'm so sorry, y'all. If y'all ever pray for me, when you think of praying for me, pray that I post nasal drip leaves because it's like I really struggle with that. And I'm, I pray about it all the time, but it's just, it's still here. I have changed diet and everything. Although I did just eat a chopped cheese. <laughs> Shy said isolation. The isolation part makes me want to cry, but my life has changed for the better so much. For the better so much, and I've been made to feel guilty for it. Girl, I feel the same way. Although I am tired of isolation now. I am. I would like some good quality companionship and company. Real, authentic, genuine friendship and good times. Nella Britt said, be patient. He will prepare a table for you. Uh, he will prepare your table in the in front of your enemies, girl. I know. I feel it. So I'm I'm still being patient. Like I'm not. It's for me, it's not even a lack of like patience. Holy Spirit said, yes, it is. Okay. It could be a it is it is a lack of patience. I'm not gonna sit here and argue with the Holy Spirit, but it is it's deeply I'm grateful for a roof over my head, clothes on my back. And many other things, many other things. But it is hard to live in this level of poverty. It is. Um, and not because it eats at my integrity or, like, my dignity. I'm still the same Sade. I still care. Like, when I go outside, the way I get treated tells me that people wouldn't even think that I live the way that I live. But I know the truth of how I live. But I'm also not hiding it, you know? But I'm, I don't overshare about it because it's, like, who wants to overshare about rats, roaches, you know, and poverty? Nobody. Um, but 
you know, some, like, I don't need, my shower runs cold for months until there's a break in the season. And so upward to now, it's still cold. So I, I was at my mom's house spending the night. That's why she just brought my stuff back so that I could take a good shower and, like, wash my hair and do my hair and stuff like that. So, like, even not having the comfort of taking a warm shower, and I know, like, I'm in a first world country, and other people don't have that luxury whatsoever, not even on a daily basis. But I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not hard. And it's weird to say, but like painful on like a psychological level. Like when you're like having a long day, you're just like, I would like to take a warm shower. And your shower is frigidly cold. It's like, okay. And I, I'm, I wish I was like capping about that, but I'm not. I'm not. I just, I'm just so tired and over it that I just, it's just the reality. So it's like, yes, be patient. He will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. May the enemies be blessed. Shade wants a warm shower. <laughs> Shade wants to be able to have a fridge that works where I'm not putting stuff in my freezer. After I came back from Jamaica, the, the dang fridge is broken. The whole room smelled like freaking rats because the roof is made from like, I don't even know. And the rats be like up there doing whatever they be doing and breading. I don't know. I haven't seen a roach in a while, but definitely used to be a lot of roaches. And all these things also speak to the manifestations of like the spiritual condition of this house. And I'm not even trying to be no way, but this is something that I am going to talk about very deeply. And sorry if my whole demeanor has kind of changed. I'm like super tired now, but I'm also being like dead ass. Like I was thinking about this on a deep level last night, but on some real shit, like those things also speak to the spiritual condition of the establishment, no matter where you go. And Sometimes it doesn't speak to the spiritual condition of the people, but maybe the former people that used to own the place. Like, it's a lot of different things. It's a lot of different things. And so it's important to diagnose something, especially when you're diagnosing something spiritually, to really understand its context, its history, and all that different types of stuff. Because then you'll say something out of its context about something, and it's not really what you think it is. All that said, Yes, he will prepare the <laughs> table before me in the presence of my enemies. But it's like, I want a warm shower. So anyways, yeah, moving forward. Uh, the Purpose of Freedom. Get this book by Joshua Easy. Check him out. He has YouTube too. The Humble One. Okay, we'll look into that. Thank you for sharing that reference. Um, Let us know why you said we should check that out. Although I guess it's kind of self-explanatory because the book is called The Purpose of Freedom. Big boy, get him. I don't know why, but I love that handle. Big boy, get him. <laughs> um, everything going to be okay. You already know God is with you. That's big facts. I do know that. I do know that without a shadow of a doubt. I do know that. And thank you for all those who are praying for um, breakthrough for me. Millie Talks Truth TV, girl. I'm going to get into prayer for you because I pray that you have a shift and a breakthrough in your life as well in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not going to repeat what you wrote, but it's just like, it's, I don't know what that's like, but I know that it's, it's not easy. And so I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you relate, but not by way of like the level of like poverty that we're going through, but just by a sense of like, you know, that you're not alone. The humble will be exalted. He will raise you up in ways that you couldn't foresee. Don't worry, sis. Girl, I know. I could feel it. I could feel it. I could feel it. I could feel it. So thank you. Sunflower said, move to Georgia, girl. I think you'd find a more supportive community. I don't see myself in Georgia. I I, I don't see myself in Georgia. And also, I've tried to move so many times, and I haven't been able to move. So it's also really about where God wants me. And that much has been very clear to me. Like God is like, Shade, I'm, don't worry. I'm working it out. Be patient. And also, um, for those of you who may not know, this house is, my daddy owned this house. So it's, it, the situation is more nuancedly complicated than like the things that I've said. 
And so imagine me telling you that my shower water runs cold, my fridge is broken, my stove is like broken, my toilet is practically broken. This house is like literally, I can, this house, oh man, if I talk about this house, I'm just going to get super emotional and I don't want to overwhelm myself before bed. I'm going to just say that this house is damn demonic. I'll say that. Um, I know it for sure. I know it for sure. And I'm not going to talk deep about it. But when I asked God, like, why can't I leave this house? And I think I shared this on a, one other live before. He said that I am the heart of this house. And when I came back from Jamaica, the spiritual decrepitness that I could feel in this house specifically was this house is like a vortex and this is why I don't like to invite people here anymore because it almost feels like I don't know how to describe it this house releases me because it doesn't have a hold on me but I am here for a reason and I, I can't even speak any more past that because it kind of Seems complex for me to have said that and then said that this house is a vortex. For another day, I think when I talk about the Jamaica thing and like more the conversation that I had with my dad or rather what I said to my dad, because I really, he, he done poked the bear, y'all. And every person who poked the bear under the usher of the Holy Spirit, I let that chapel say, okay. So let me move forward. Oh, my leg. Uh, I was gonna answer that, but I not right now. Um, Tarika Renee, I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. I come into agreement with that in the mighty and precious name of Christ Jesus. And I come into agreement for those of us who are on the live, who have even gotten off the live, those of us who will watch it upward to this point, those who will only even see this point. I decree and declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. That is Isaiah 2 verse 22. I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus over everyone on this live. That we are breaking through. Okay? In Jesus' mighty name. That's a deep question, Siba Murray. You said, how do you feel about the theory about us being reflections slash fragments of God? It reminds me of what you are speaking on. The only thing that I can say to that right now before I expound on that theologically, and maybe I'll revisit that sometime in the future, is that God literally made us in his own image. <laughs> so, you know, the language in context to like, you know, being reflection slash fragments of God and then question mark. He said that we were made in his image, literally. So I just, if that's the language they want to use, okay. But he said that we were made in his image. So, and we don't all look the same. And so maybe fragments and reflections in that kind of context, it's a complex conversation. It's, it's hard for me to like, kind of like sit here and have, and, and speak to that on a deep level right now. Um, but I hope in short that kind of like touches it a little bit. Virgo's finest. How are you doing, girl? Um, you said Paris Milan for when I was talking about certain influencers. I didn't watch Paris Milan for some reason. I don't know why. I did not get into her. I don't know how to say your name, Candia. I hopefully I'm saying your name right. 
How do I feel about new age spirituality? As someone who came out of new age spirituality, but I never got overly deep into it, I would say that the deception there is is vast. And because you are you can will your destiny in new age spirituality, that's the attractiveness of it. And that's why so many people are in new age spirituality. And a lot of those people, the people who are making the videos about, you know, your twin flame is this and all that other stuff, the co-star app, astrology, horoscope, all of it, tarot, palm reading, new age, pharmacia, all of it, ayahuasca, all of it. Oh my God, the price that they are paying, that they don't know that they're paying to be involved in that is going to be of a grave disadvantage to them grave disadvantage because while yes some of those very same people belong to christ because that's really they're operating in the sin of witchcraft some unbeknownst to themselves and when when those who belong to christ that are there come out of it you're gonna have to give all of it back up you're gonna have to throw all the money that you spent on those crystals and those cards and those healings and all of that, it's all going to be a waste. And the worst thing about new age deception, really, spirituality, it's not new. That's the that's the, the most interesting part about it. It's not new. <laughs> it's not new. It's just been reinvented, repackaged, and sold to the people. And because the older generation, I have a huge, huge issue with the generation that has come before us, like many do, because their level of like passivity towards their life and what they benefited from by way of their parents' prayers. And then therefore their level of en enjoying that abundance and then allowing for like a desecration in morality because they were, they did not know how to steward what they were blessed to enjoy even in black society has caused for like this mental regression that has affected the children, the millennials, then the everyone there afterwards in a way that is so grave. Because what would those people be called? The, the baby boomers? Yeah. And I, I mean, people have had like dialogues about it, but on a spiritual level, when you look at it, because, you know, the 70s was the Jesus movement and the baby boomers come right before that movement. And so a lot of our parents are like, you know, their teenage years or so to speak, subsequently is like the 70s, 80s or maybe late 60s, contingent upon how old your parents are. And the they those ones have given our parents have given us a grave disservice by way of what the baby boomers did by giving them all this access to wealth, even some blacks, you know, who were able to climb the social ladder, but did not teach their children. And I can understand, you know, the disparity in that space, because you finally were able to get it. You probably don't even know how to even give language to how to steward it, except in ways that are harmful, where it's like, you better finish all that food on your plate, or you better like, you know, certain things. And so how that's like trans translated itself i i feel like the word i want to use is translated but like i don't want to be overly wordy and like say a word that is not a word but I, I almost feel like that is the word but i can't exactly remember but it's like basically transcended into the culture of now is like moral apathy in a lot of ways um and there was something else that I wanted to connect that to, but I can't exactly remember, but it's just created like a, a lot of like devastation and the level of passivity that I have found in the, the baby boomers, is that what they would be called? Like our grandparents age now, like the baby boomers, so to speak, or like the ones that came from like, you know, world war two and blah, 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 like those children, they they lack accountability on a deep level. And then our parents, it's hard to tell if they lack accountability on a deeper level or if they are passive 
to a point of mediocrity and therefore you lack accountability on a deeper level. Does that make sense? Like it, it's, it's hard because when you think of the boomers, you think of more of their trauma and pain, whether they're on the black side or the other like racial sides, because they're, the world is in a, like a, a cultural unrest because the Holocaust is going on. And then for blacks, you know, we're all, we've already survived so many Holocausts. So it's already depression. It's already all these grave things that we've survived amidst this huge, you know, war that like, and you got to think about the world at that time. Everybody's tuned into the same things. So even though we kind of have that like socially now because of like Shade Room and all these different platforms, you didn't have like, everybody didn't have their own phone or anything like that. Like you're, everybody's listening to the radio. So you're tuned into one, it's one mic, one sound, you know? So there's this like real, there's, there's no, almost no distraction from the reality of what's going on. And on top of that, because you don't have a phone to lay in the bed at like two o'clock in the morning and look at, you're thinking about life in a different, you're thinking about life and death in a more serious capacity. And I think where there afterwards, the 70s movement comes, you know, those 20 odd so years later, um, because the Holocaust time is like, you know, what, 1941 to 1947 or something like that, you know, 20 odd so years later, we come into the Jesus movement. And this is like, you know, Rock of Ages, so to speak. I don't know if Rock of Ages or rather Rolling Stone, you know, the hippie culture and all this type of stuff, self-love movement. And it's happening. It's, it's, it's a, it's a. It's a global movement, you know, and black people are at the precedence and the forefront of that in so many ways, as we always are, because we just got the juice like that, where we are, you know, being empowered and taking our power back to look and feel bliggity biggity black, you know, and that also means that at that time, while our voices are being amplified to some capacity, that means money is moving. You know, because we're able to style ourselves and do things in ways that we had not formally done because a couple hundred years ago we were slaves. So, you know, that's a that's maybe we were still fighting the, these huge principalities, but we had made these great, these um, monumentous progressions, you know, and when you make a progression for identity, oh, it's game over. That's when the enemy gets real mad. And so that gets attacked and simultaneously amidst that, you know, Black Panther movement, all the type of stuff, because there is a spiritual movement happening amidst that, because anything that's involving identity is a spiritual movement, point blank, period. The Jesus movement is coming to pass because people were experimenting with all these psychedelics and having like these spiritual awakenings and realizing again, and this is why I say new age spirituality is just repackaged as it always has been from the times of biblical times. When it happens back in the 70s, people are getting so far into the abyss of like this spiritual movement that instead of just meeting what they should have made, some of them probably like had an experience where they went to hell or, you know, all these different things that now you kind of hear like people talk about in new age now when they're like testifying about how they came to Christ. They're also having experiences where they are coming to Christ, being reborn and renewed with the mind of Christ. And so that's awesome. But then the 80s comes and you know, the black church was the, was the church to be at. That's where the, the power of God is moving and has been moving for years before that, because no matter the, no matter the, the trials and the tribulations that we had gone through as a people, the reality of Christ was a real thing, you know, aside from people trying to make sense of, is he white? Is he black? All this different types of stuff. And that's a conversation for another day as well. So when the government starts to realize like, okay, the blacks are overly unified. They just moved out of a movement where it gave them back their identity, their autonomy, their understanding of themselves. And a, a church is also how they mobilize themselves and, and, you know, congregate. How do we tear this down? We're going to put drugs in their communities. And we're also going to put money in the church. When the, when the, the principality of moment comes into a spot, you can guarantee that it's going to get demonic <laughs> over time. And so when the money comes in, the pastors start, the anointing leaves. The hand of God is now removed from the house of God because you put money over God. And there's deeper conversations to that. And so how that's affected our parents alongside the drug epidemic, so to speak. And then 10 years later, 
AIDS comes out, what is that? Like the nineties and AIDS comes out. You're, you're having a, a, a serious cultural reset that if you weren't holding on to God before, you definitely weren't holding on to God in those times. And, you know, we're the most privileged of all generations before us, because if there's ever been a time to understand God and to know God, this is how you know it's the end times. I'm just being so fucking real. I feel we've never lived in a time like this before. We have never lived in a time that is this monumentally progressive and accessible to the word of God. To testimonies of other people talking about things that some people that probably, ex- people probably have experienced this before, like 20, 30 years ago, but they would have never spoke about it. But we live in a time now where people are talking about spiritual warfare like it's normal everyday stuff without fear. We've never lived in a time where it's accessible like this to speak about. So there was something else I wanted to say, but hopefully all of that makes sense. I'm going to skip down so that if there's anything that I missed in what I just said, y'all can like, let me know. Um, um, um. I love you guys so much. You guys are so awesome, literally. I know I said that like hella monotone, but I'm, I say this all the time. But like, I love my community. I really do. I love you guys so much. You guys are. I just love you guys so much. You don't even understand. And you, I, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much. I love you guys so much. And if, if you haven't heard somebody tell you that they love you today, know that I love you. Shade Watkins loves you guys. And I know people be saying that. I literally love you guys. I pray that you guys are well. I pray that we rise above every single thing that the devil tried to put in our way to create delay and take us out of the will of the God-given destiny that we have. Because you guys are a uh, amazing. I can't, like, I'm always going to be Shia Watkins, but you guys have helped me so greatly, so greatly. I am so, so deeply grateful. You don't even understand. I will start crying, but I'm tired of crying. (laughs) So just please know that I am just deeply grateful for y'all. Free from Jag, how do we clear the bloodline? Um, in short, because that is, that's a deep conversation dwell get into the secret place whatever your secret place is with god i'm not sure if you're familiar with what the secret place is but get into the secret place which means consecrating yourself setting out an intentional time consistently to speak with god and just invite the presence of the holy spirit and first get into a uh, attitude what i like to do i would say just by suggestion i like to thank god first and i, uh, I i've said this throughout the live too like you know, God, I don't always understand it, but I just thank you anyways. I love you. I appreciate you. And I pray that I just continue to to do this walk as you intend and want me to. After you get through that, get into repentance, anything that you can think of, known sin and unknown sin, lay it before God and ask him to make your heart clean and ask him to purify your intentions and for him to dwell in, in you. Like they say, this is, this is your home, Lord. I'm I, I render it over to you. You do the perfect work here. It's not for me to do. It's for you to do. And I come into agreement with your perfect and preferred will. It ain't always easy once you finally hear what he's saying. He's like, hey, I need you to stop doing this. Or I want you to do this. Sometimes it's difficult. But just try to do that part the best way you can. But as far as like the bloodline part, as you consecrate yourself in that space of dwelling, ask God, what's on my bloodline? What do I need to renounce? What do I need to repent for? What do I need to go into deliverance for? I'm going to add this other girl's um, video on self-deliverance. Really, really good. Self-deliverance is important. Like some people think they need to go to deliverance ministers. Yes, that might be necessary. But in this hour, I be- I really believe that God is rising up a generation and an, a, like an end time army that is way more familiar than any other of the former three generations, so to speak of like how to have 
genuine, intimate relationship with God. And it's going to be so necessary for the times ahead. It's going to be so necessary to walk in the power of God, to walk with the peace and the preparation of the gospel at your feet, to, to have up the shield of faith. It's going to be so necessary to know who your God is and where your help comes from. Because when you start seeing people, like when we're outside and the, it's really chaotic, you might run into a devil or rather a devil might run into you because they love the children of the light, which is so annoying and very backwards, but neither here nor there. And you might have to cast out a devil and don't be scared. Literally, you're going to have to command that devil to come out that person. And they more scared of you than, look, read it time and time again in the biblical context, okay? And this also means as you're being equipped, you might have to, if, if God says fast, fast. If he says pray, pray. When I tell you the last like year of my life, I was fasting so much that I was just like, all right, am I really hearing from God? I really was though the whole entire time because I was fasting against infirmity because of what my uncle was doing in Jamaica as far as his environmental monitoring spirit witchcraft voodoo bullshit that he was doing. So I'm like literally looking in the mirror and I'm losing all this weight. And yes, it was because I was fasting, but there were times where I was eating and I had fasted from before and I had not lost as much weight as I ended up losing. And I started realizing like, I am looking like something is more wrong. And I realized that I was dealing with infirmity to the point where I'm going to say, no, God says it's okay to say. I literally, I, I thought I had cancer, I, and I didn't have the capacity to go to the to the hospital as of yet because oh, that's so much of a deep conversation. Not the hospital, but the doctor to like do a blood test or anything like that because because because. And I'll talk about that another day. But when I tell you, I like for the longest time I could see my rib cage, and I was just like. I was asking God what was wrong. And he was like, no, you, you see what's wrong, but it's not because you're fasting. And a lot of people have like phantom illnesses. And it's not because the illness is fake. It's because when you go to the doctor, they say nothing is wrong with you, but something is wrong with you. But it's because somebody is attacking you in the spirit. And let me tell you when, how, how this really came about. Back in the summer, I ended up having a dream that I had slept with somebody. And I don't really have, I haven't had dreams like that in a really long time. And when I had that dream, I knew that something was wrong because, and this is going to sound disgusting. And I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus for it to ever happen again. I send the Holy Ghost fire to anybody that wants to do anything like that. Any witch, any war, like I send the Holy Ghost fire to in the mighty name of Jesus. I, ooh, I, I shatter every demonic mirror in the mighty name of Jesus. I burn up every garment of, of reproach, any garment of rejection, any garment of that wants to thwart my destiny, my God-given destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for God's righteous judgment to come and catch that booty in the mighty name of Jesus. All that said, um, dang, there was something important that I wanted, <laughs> wanted to say. Um, I was looking sick. I knew that I was sick. I can't remember. When it comes back to mind. I'll say it, but I can't remember. But hopefully that answers your question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Brianna Troy, can you talk about the history of Jesus specifically when it comes to Christianity in Africa before the transatlantic before the transatlantic slave trade? Yes, absolutely, but I'm not gonna do that here right now because it's gonna just be really long. And I'm glad that you asked that question because I remember being in that space completely. I'm like, why Jesus? Get the F out of here, bro. Like, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, especially from like an intellectual stance. I will, let me answer it like this in short. And this might not be a satisf satisfactory answer for where you are right now, which I understand because I remember being in that space. You're going to have to take your intellectual Interest. Here's the thing. Being a believer in Christ does not remove being an intellectual. But where you are for what you're trying to understand is going to be your blind spot for your relationship with Christ so that the spirit of truth can dwell in and on you to disciple you and how that is not important. And it's not because it's not important, but it's not important, so to speak. 
And that's a deep, deep, deep conversation that I don't have the capacity to speak to right now. But that's not a bad question. That's actually a great question. I just don't have the capacity to speak to it right now. If you're comfortable, I want to pray for you. I'm not going to pray for you on the live. I'm going to pray when I get off that you have a revelation and a, a experience with Christ to know that he is real and he can disciple you through those spaces so that you can have revelation and understanding on these contexts and where they are important and then also where they're not, if that makes any sense. Um, but that's not a bad question at all. And I'm glad that you asked that because I used to be asking questions like that and it would freaking piss me the F off that people would not like, I always, that's, I always, that's why I never wanted to be, not that I didn't want to be a Christian, but like, well, I did, I, I had to announce, you know, being a Christian to be an African spiritualist. Obviously I'm not that now. Um, because you see, I just kind of got a little dark. Oh, I repeat that in Jesus name. <laughs> But like I, I did that walk. I did that walk. You know, I, I, I went to school to study Pan Africanism. Um, maybe Christ is just where it's at. Like that's <laughs> plain and simple. That's all I can say because I know what you're talking about, but it's not important. And I, I don't want to be like annoying and like just like passing it off and stuff. But it's, it's not. Um, and sorry if that seems offensive, but I'm not trying to be offensive. Thank you, Kelsey. God, give Shade access to warm showers daily in Jesus' name. I be praying that. Sometimes I just be in the shower and I be like, God. I pro No, real talk, though. Like, on days where it's really hot, I'm like, God, please let the shower be warm. It be turning warm. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. But more consistently than not, it be cold. And I'm just like, I cannot. I'm tired. <laughs> Um, let's keep moving down. Oh, thank you, Brianna Nicole, praying for a safe, you're the same person who asked the other question about the transatlantic slave trade, but praying for a safe and comfortable living environment for you. Thank you, baby girl. God bless you. Um, Kelsey's life. So this is a different person. Um, you don't like making YouTube videos anymore? No, I miss making YouTube videos. In fact, I plan to come back to YouTube, although I need to buy a new camera. Um, and the camera that I really like is discontinued. I mean, like I can still purchase it, but like they don't really make the model anymore. So if it were to break or something, I would just have to buy a new one, even though I really love this camera. And just to like side segue real quick for when I do talk about Jamaica, I brought that camera with me to Jamaica and this uncle, he... Let's just say I left the camera in Jamaica and I threw it in the trash. So, yeah. <sighs> but God used that camera to also show me who he is. So, yeah. The thrift queen said these things could be God pushing you to move. You know, in a former season, I thought that, but I have literally tried to move so many times. And I, I had not been able to move. But this time, I, I do believe in my heart. I, uh, I'm not going to say anything, actually. I'm going to leave that alone. If it's God's will for me to leave, I pray that I am leaving from here. That's what I pray. I'll say that. And that's hard to pray because, or come into agreement with them because I, I tell you quite literally, honestly, I don't want to be here anymore, but I, I do believe that there's a reason that I am here. Seneca Gami. I really hope I'm saying your name correctly, but I don't feel like I said it correctly. So let me know how to pronounce it, your handle. You said to make repairs on a family home. Shade, take heart. Aww. Um, my grandmother's home was in a state of disrepair after her passing, but we have entered a season of restoration. You and God are bringing the shift. Aww. I do believe that a season of restoration is coming to pass. Um, 
And I that's why it's like hard for me to pray about moving because it'd be one thing if I was just living in this room and it was just like a random room. It's my daddy house. <laughs> you know, other people live in the other parts of the room, but it's like this literally is my daddy house. So it's just like, ah, oh, God is doing a thing. And this is why I like, I also pray for just righteous judgment because when I say the evil and the wickedness, Shada is tied. You're, and then people want to act like I did something because I called out the evil and the wickedness and I said, repent. What did you want me to do? Smack the shit out you? <laughs> it's, it's which one? Okay. Sorry, but that's how I, that's how I really feel. Like, that's how I really be feeling. Literally. Shay says, I appreciate your video so much during this time, during this past year. During this time, this past year has been extremely life-changing and depressing. The devil has used my family and attempted to destroy me, and it is sad to come to terms with. Girl, I am going to get into prayer for you because I know exactly what that feels like. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. But that also means, girl, that the glory ahead of you, baby girl, is bright. So keep moving, even if it takes, and I hate to say this because people want to hear like a quick turnaround word, even if it takes years. But if you notice with all the, all the, the, not the most beloved, because we're all most beloved by Christ, but like David, Joseph, others to whom I can't think of right now. Oh, Hadasha, but really Esther. It took years before, okay, goes back to that pressing of like the sweet oil. Sometimes it takes years before you're transformed into what God needs. So, and what they're trying to, what they meant for evil, God is going to use for good. Okay. So hold on and get into agreement with God's will and press in and see what he's saying. Ask him what's, what's, ask him. I don't know why I feel led to say this, but this is what I feel specifically. Ask God about, ask God what is for you. Ask God to tell you what is for you from him. And it's not about what God does for us, you know, it's it's not about that, so to speak, because it's about who he is for us. And those nuances are so important. However, be it, God loves us so much, he'll let you know, like, oh, I want to bless you like this. And so when you know, it's like, you know, when he gave Joseph the dream. Now, Joseph didn't know it was going to, he was going to have to be in the pit to be in the palace. But God did tell him he's going to be in the palace. So, you know, it helps you to know, like, what you're, like, even when I was in Jamaica going through the worst of my spiritual warfare, and I was like, I am, like, I knew that I was going to make it through and live, but I was, there were days where I was like, one time I came into the house, I'll say this, with a fucking jagged knife in his back pocket, talking to me crazy. And he had the murderous spirit on him because he knew that I knew now, it's you, nigga. It's you been fucking up my family. It's you been doing witchcraft. It's you not taking accountability about the shit that's gone on. It's you that did made. I'm going to let it. I'm going to stop right there. It's you, though. Come into the room talking to me crazy. And all I could think was these two things, which is I've been here before. Because O did this. And he didn't even just have the shit in his back pocket. He's like holding the shit. So I'm just like being calm. I'm kind of laughing a little bit too, because I'm at this point, I'm just like, this is so fucking dumb. Like, you're just fucking dumb. Like, this is shit. And that's what I want to say, because I'm a hood bitch, you know? And that's like, people think God won't use like what you used to be as you move forward. Like, those parts are important, you know? Those, those parts are important. And so I'm just thinking that I'm just like, I'm tired, but also this is silly and dumb. And what are you trying to do? Like scare tactics, bro? Like, I don't like, and I guess I'm thinking more like that more than anything because God told me something specific when I was dwelling in the secret place a, a few months prior that I had known that I known that I knew that God, I was going to live to see another day. 
unless he had ultimately decided no matter the fact that he can't he can't pass he can't go past what god doesn't allow so i just was like i'll make it through so all that said know what god says about you for you specifically because it helps you to know to it helps you to hold on it helps you to have a grip um so yeah hopefully that makes sense Shaniqua Presley. I hope I said your name properly, but I feel like I kind of didn't. So please forgive me and like spell it prophetically in the comments. Um, I said prophetically, phonetically is what I meant to say. I pray the assignment that God has graced you with continues to pull down strongholds. I come into agreement with that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God richly cover and bless you, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Thank you very much. And God bless you, Mrs. Presley or Miss Presley in the mighty name of Jesus. I appreciate that. I take that fully in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Victoria Davis, I'm so glad I caught this live. God bless you, girl. I hope that you're having a great Resurrection Sunday. Is it still Sunday? No, it's not. Today is now Monday. <laughs> um, Baby boomers spiritually fell asleep at the wheel or abandoned their stewardship. That is facts. Um, the thrift queen, basically the past generation's been off post-spirituality and we're experiencing that is also facts. There is literally not, neither of my parents were present in the church. It was the work of my grandparents that truly got me through so much and the prayers and love, man. Yup. And that's what I was trying to say about the baby boomers. The baby boomers, although they lack accountability, they have a relationship with God that the, the our parents don't really have. And I think it's because by way of the blessing of the abundance that they were able to bask in that fruitfulness, they got lazy and 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 became mediocre. Like their relationship just became mediocre. And when I think about the book of Revelations towards the end, even though that's a book you should read in chronological order, you know, it talks about the unrepentance of the kings of Babylon by pressing themselves into the, the sin of Jezebel, drinking her wine and laughing with her and sleeping with her and stuff like that. And it's just like our parents' generation, oh my gosh, they laughed it up with Queen Jezebel, okay? And here we are, the kids gravely paying for it and they're asking us why you don't why you don't have no good job why are you not rich why are you not like that yo cousin um because you went over there and made a contract with the devil and i'm over here fighting demons that you can't seem to fight okay do you want me to smack the holy spirit into you or like and this is why i say it's like telling them to repent they're like ah I don't need to repent. I know who Jesus is, but I don't need to repent. So should I beat your ass? I don't know. Oh, Lord, forgive me. But you know this is how I think. So I, this is really how I think. So they are uh, meek is my wisdom. They are willfully ignorant. That right there. This is why I say sometimes the ministry might be hands because it's you might need your ass whooped. I'm sorry, I keep talking about ass whoopings a lot right now, but it's just like and they hold on to old ideas while being angry at those same ideas. It's the it's the backwardness for me. Bruh, how do you say your name? Your last name is Lachey, but Amir? No, it cannot be Amir. Um, Amir? No, I'm not saying it right. Girl, write it phonetically in the comments, girl, for me to understand and download it into my brain. Um, With our parents, it's solely, it's solely lack of accountability. They know the issues with their parents, but they convince themselves they are different. But there is no difference, just a different form. It's just annoying. It's sad. All right, Masoon, get off of here. Masoon, get off. 
Um, when you said what you said about bloodline holding you back, I really felt that some of us are called to break generational curses and it's no easy task, Jazzberry. Okay. And I pray that you are able to break every single generational curse in the mighty name of Jesus by the strategy, the divine strategy of the Holy Spirit and God gracing you with the understanding, the capacity, the wisdom to move forward in compassion, great love, stewardship in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, amen. I was thinking of if there was anything else that was coming, but that's all that came for what you wrote. So it's no easy task. Girl, just keep going. Just keep going. I promise you it will. And it's weird because I'm not in the, the fruitfulness or the promise of God, but I am at the same time because I know who my God is. I know where my hope comes from. So I'm not without, you know, so if this is what it is for the season, this is what it is. If it's going to break all the curses and my babies could be free. Okay. I pray that to be so. I pray my babies is free. Um, I think I'm pretty much done. I think I've gotten pretty much to the end. I want to answer this question. You said, how do you feel about feeding into the flesh or masturbation? I know it's a wild question. Just curious. Um, no, it's not a wild question. <laughs> wow, that's funny. I just heard God say, talk about it. <laughs> okay. So for me, as of late, right, I told, this is silly. Oh, my God. This is, because I really want to get off, like, soon, because I'm tired. But this is the last thing that I will talk about. And it makes me laugh a little bit, because it's just kind of funny. I'll say this off rip. I've always thought masturbation was dumb. I'm sorry. I, I have. I just thought that it was dumb, because it's just like, I don't know, self-pleasure just feels fake in ways and while i have done it before it's not it's not like my it's not my go to it's not my go to whatsoever i like human connection i love human connection good human connection intellectual capacity flowing back and forth. Ooh, that, that, that does something for your girl. Okay. Right in the heart. <laughs> okay. Before it even does something anywhere else, it does like you get here. Okay. Anywhere in these 18 inches and I feel God on you and not like the, the angel of light. That's not light or the likeness of Christ, but like, you're actually like a man of God. I'm going to be turned to fuck on. Okay. And so masturbation, self-pleasure in that context. It I don't know, something about it just seems really silly and vain. And I don't like stuff like that. I just I just don't. I never have. I've done it before, but it's just not it's not my cup of tea. I'll say that. Same thing like with weed. Like when I was smoking with my ex, I smoked to be on his level. Like that was his thing and so I just it was just like, oh, I'll smoke with you, bro. Like, you know, this is what you like. So I'll do it with you, you know? And it, it wasn't by way of peer pressure. It just was never like, it wasn't my thing. So it's, it doesn't like, I don't yearn for it or like lust after that. But here's what I will say that like I've been dealing with for the last little while. It's been a, it's been a little while, okay? From somebody that went from, like, every day, you know? And, like, some people come at home after work and they have a drink. Some people roll a blunt. Some people, whatever the fuck they do, right? For me, companionship and being able to roll in that bed and roll on top of your man, okay? Okay. People don't like to talk about these parts, but I'm just being real. That's very relaxing. <laughs> That's very relaxing to me. <laughs> to me. But also the discipline in being able to not let the lust of the flesh in that capacity have me to make foolish decisions 
Because I don't like the feeling of rejection. I don't like the feeling of... Nobody likes the feeling of rejection. I don't like the feeling of... Um, I don't want to cast my pearl before swine. And I'm going to just keep it a stack with y'all. And everybody should feel like this. But I know the Yelp reviews for this hotel, this five-star treatment, they're pretty good. Okay? Uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. You know, they're pretty good. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> and with that being said, like, because I know that without a, sh like, I know that. And on top of that, like, I, like, some people, and let's talk about it, right? When we get in talking context to like witchcraft and all that jazz, like, some of the girls are doing things, and I'm not saying like us, but like, some people are, like, taking their period. No, nah, like, I'm going to be really real. Like, taking their period, putting it in something so that they can jazz the nigga and keep him. And some of the niggas is taking bitches pictures and, you know, all this crazy black magic bullshit. I don't got to do that. Because when you have the light in Christ in you, okay, it's going to shine and bright, okay? Like the prophetess Rihanna said one time, even though she is a different prophetess for... Uh, I'm going to talk about that one day, but just not right now. Shine bright like a diamond, okay? That's what your girl is doing here because of the light of Christ, <laughs> okay? And in a former season when I did not really, really know whose I was, you know, I didn't give it out cheap, but if I knew how expensive it was, because niggas be outside be like, you were my cinnamon apple! You right, okay? It's sweet over here because of where it's coming from so i don't gotta do all that mix up witchcraft bullshit i don't gotta jazz no nigga to do nothing okay i don't gotta fake nothing because i'm very entertaining and fun and cool to be around and when you're a type of person like that let me tell you that factory down there Nothing else needs to be said, okay? And the girls who get it, get it, okay? Let's say amen in the congregation! And nobody likes to talk about these parts. Michael Tobby kind of talking about it, but it's kind of cringeworthy because the way he, like, kind of, you know what? I'm not going to get deeper into it. But, like, I'm glad that he talks about it sometimes because people try to, purr. People try to act like there's not an anointing in the bedroom. We need to talk about it. And so, for me, going back to, like, self-pleasure, I don't like that stuff. You know, I, I need human connection. I got to feel it. I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to, I got to though, you know? And for me now, like as of late, because it's been a little while, I'm like, <sighs> as a person who never thought about the husband really, really hard, I'm like, Lord, please, <laughs> please send the husband because and i i like i think about this and it's so interesting because like there's you guys have been with me on this live so there are things that god was like don't talk about that but this he said talk about it i'm like i'm like please send the husband and i'm like is it vain that i'm like thinking about like being with this man like being with this, you know what i'm talking about like being with this man right <laughs> but it's like not I would, and, you know, let's have correction and dialogue in this, you know, video. For me, like, not for me, so to speak, but. For the fact that I'm thinking about my husband a lot in the context of, like, I am ready to do, so, like, get the passions of the flesh, like, engage with who my husband is. I'm like. Am I in the wrong? Am I like in a lustful place? Or is this like a healthily minded place? Because I just am excited about, you know, now, especially now that I know that like I am a wife and that's like what God is making me over to be, to give my my husband like what he deserves. So even like in the beginning when I said to y'all, like, you know, God told me to stop sleeping with my ex and stuff like that, I took that seriously. And now that we're not together, when I think about whoever my husband is, like, it feels good to know, like, you know, God did a work in me, okay? He did a work in me, and that's all I will say. 
<laughs> he didn't work in me. And so, and there was already like, you know what? I'm going to leave that alone. I will leave that alone. But I, what else do I want to say? In context to the other parts that, on a serious level, the other parts that God has made over to the maturity of being a wife and a wife in Christ. So being able to genuinely pray for my husband, being able to know that like when he comes home, I'm like contingent upon the leading of the Holy Spirit. Like I always think about like anointing my husband's feet a lot. I, I, like for some reason I've been like seeing that a lot and God has been having me to anoint my feet a lot. And he's been having me to do that for months. And it wasn't until recently, oh wow, the bottoms of my feet, I like feel them right now. It's interesting. Like they feel like sometimes when I talk about it, it's like my feet like pulsate a little bit and those are spiritual things too, but I'm not going to talk about that too deep right now. Anyhow, I didn't know until recently. So months I've been anointing the bottoms of my feet. And when he first told the when I was starting to dwell and the Holy Spirit told me that, I thought that was really weird. I was like, why is he telling me to anoint the bottoms of my feet? I recently found out towards the ending of me being in Jamaica that it's actually customary. It was customary in biblical times for people to take off their shoes when they walk into a person's house, have their feet clean, so to speak, and for their feet to be anointed. And so when I saw that, I was just like, it's that's why obedience to Christ is so important because in one season, you may not may not understand why you're doing something until God gives you the revelation you know? And so it just, it delighted me so greatly to know that. And so when I think about my future husband and I think about, you know, just really what it is to be a a, a woman of God and a, a godly wife and to really adhere to those spaces with reverence by honoring God and therefore honoring the head of the house, which is my husband and being submitted onto him, trusting his leadership, letting him be the man that God called him to be, that just delights me so greatly. And so to be made over in the way that I am and God has like made me to be, I feel, oh, I, I feel happy for my future husband because I feel like he will be very happy. And I, I think the same for all you ladies who are in a place of consecration as well. Like, I feel like, I don't know, it just feels really good, but sometimes the wait is like long. And I know my wait isn't as long as some other people's, but I'm just like, Lord. Yeah. So let me go back and read. Y'all are in here laughing. Y'all funny. <laughs> Trust rambles. How do you know the difference between God's purpose for you and your own passions? And what would you do if your purpose is something you don't want to do? Mm, to that last part, and what would you do if your purpose is something you don't want to do? When you love God, God makes you over to his likeness. And so no matter, because of your surrender and your commitment to Christ, to, to love God and let the perfect work be done, you're not going to be able to run from your purpose, so to speak, you know? And if you run from your purpose, you're going to just live a mediocre life. And some people don't say it that plain, but just to be in short, that's that's really what's going to happen. Because, you know, you think of somebody like Jonah in the Bible, he tried to run away from doing what God had asked him to do, and he got thrown into the mouth of the whale. So you're not going to be able to escape your purpose. Um and so in context to how do you know the difference between what God's purpose, what's God's purpose for you and your own passions, ask God. He will definitely tell you and make the distinguishing differences, show you the distinguishing differences between the two. Um, I have found that some of your inner, deeper passions, especially when you're made over to the likeness of Christ, actually are things that he put inside of you. So it's not like, but sometimes they need to be edified by Christ so that it can bring glory to him. And so a lot of people think that they have to give up their interests and their likes. No, 
he not necessarily uh, contingent upon what the Holy Spirit says. I'm not the Holy Spirit. So you got to like tap in and see what he says. It's more so like. Those were things that were already in you that God put there that may have been. I don't know why I want to use this word, but finagled by the devil and God wants to purify it so that glory can be put in that space instead, you know? So hopefully that answers that question in short. My granny used to say, I keep my peace so I can keep my peace. <laughs> Period. Okay. Period. Man. Amira. Okay. Hey, Amira. Amira Lachey. Thank you, girl. I love when you guys um do the name corrections for me. I appreciate that so much. That's what E said, podcast. Shade, could you pray for me tonight, please? Yes, I absolutely can. Let me. What is your real name? And if you don't feel comfortable, I'll just, God knows all his children. So I'll say that's what E said, podcast. Okay. Well, let me send that to myself. Why do I feel like a random like wave of like sadness because my mom called me earlier trying to get me some food even though I already ate and it's just like mom I don't need any food I'm on live like leave me alone but it's like oh I feel sad because she was just trying to be nice. <laughs> um that was random but I just wanted to share that. Jasper, you got married yesterday. Wow, that is so, it's so amazing how time moves because I remember on the last, one of the last lives you were talking about getting married. So yes, I will pray for you and your new husband. Oh my gosh, God bless you, girl. And if you want to put your real name or your new last name, baby girl, let me know so I can pray for y'all and y'all bloodline, if y'all future children, if y'all intend to have children, not pushing that on y'all, just, you know, let me know. All right, soon get off for real, for real, because I am tired. But I love you guys. Thank you for like you know dialoguing with me. I love you guys so much. Seriously, you guys are just so freaking amazing. Seriously. <clears throat> A lot of family trauma and deep emotions came up during the wedding, girl. That does happen. Yo, I cannot wait to have deep conversation about marriage. Um. I thought that was the season that I was getting ready to walk into formally. I really did. Um, and that comes up a lot. And it should come up because the two become one. And you're going to want, you and your husband are going to want to, and I'm saying this now for everybody who intends to get mad, you're going to want to fight those things that want to tear down the glory of what God wants to do in our lives. So if they come up, if they come up with intention for you guys to come against them in Christ. Y'all are so funny. Oh my gosh. Oh, Keisha. Yes. Thank you for writing. Um, Jasper, um, congrats and God bless on her union. Yes. Y'all spread the love, please. Oh my gosh, yes, Seneca. I don't know how, girl, you got to write that phonetically for real in the comments. But stay focused in God and stay praying for you. I'm gonna, and stay praying for you and your husband, yup. And set those firm, healthy boundaries. Mm hmm. You and your house have to be covered, yes, especially in this hour, especially because the devil hates, he hates unions, he hates marriage, he hates it so much. So he will do everything to try to tear that down. So you better stand. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. And one thing that I've learned as a woman of God growing up, especially because I am a hood bitch, ask God to help you to speak with honey on your mouth. There is a time to speak sternly and a time to address something in a way that allows for you to be free because that's what a, a true relationship is. But more than anything, ask God to anoint your mouth to speak with honey on your lips and to have you to speak um, living waters, you know, to speak with the renewed mind in Christ and not just what you want to say. That's one thing that I've really, 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 really learned because, okay, conversation for 
next time, men, y'all is very sensitive. Y'all is almost more sensitive than us women's. I'm moving forward. I have said my piece. <laughs> That's a good question. I'm scared to read that out loud and answer. Mela Britt, do you think your husband can be an ex? I don't even mean to be corny or stupid, girl. Only God knows. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows. That's where you got to press in with God because only he could tell you. Only he could tell you. A lot of people say an ex is an ex for a reason, but I've seen people say that their marriage was restored. I, I see people say that, oh, God brought this person back into my life and that is my kingdom spouse. So that's where you press in with God. Um, and I'm not a wife yet, so I don't know. You know, I almost thought I was a wife and then I wasn't a wife. So it's just like, I can't even tell you, honestly. I really don't know. But any wives want to let us know, like, can an ex be the husband that God is ordaining for you to marriage? Let us know. We would love to know. Speechy Kim. Am I saying your handle right? I hope I am. First of all, I love you, girl, because you are always super supportive in the comments. God bless you and God bless your engagement. I pray that it is blessed and anointed with the favor and the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus, girl. Okay, you said I'm engaged and that's what I'm going through. Girl, continue to go through, and I God bless y'all as y'all get through that season in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm gonna pray for y'all um, as I pray for the other people that I added um, tonight. Santa, I'm not a Christian, but I relate to what you have. I relate to you, and you have a lot of wisdom to offer. Thank you, girl. God bless you. Um, Sorry if my eyes are like blinking a lot. I'm telling you, I'm super tired. Um, anything else? Can you speak on the challenge that it is going from having intercourse with your partner than expressing that you don't want to partake anymore? Because it's quite difficult for me, but I feel convicted to stop. Um, we, as human beings, have a hard time stopping doing things on our own. And that's where you invite the Holy Spirit to help you to stop. Because we don't have the capacity to stop on our own. We, we're, you know, we're, we're still in the flesh. We're still in the world. If the issue that you're having with stopping is actually coming from more so the relationship, then you should get into prayer about how God wants you to navigate that re your relationship moving forward. Um, I'm going to leave it like that for now because if I expound, I'm super tired, so I don't want to expound. And if I do expound, I... Uh, Context, there's no way for me to expound now with me being tired because the context that's necessary for me to speak to what you're expressing is kind of a bit more. And even though it's not so much, it's nuanced enough where it's like I would need to talk about it and have that like, you know, added to cushion what I want to say. But you need to get into prayer about how God wants you to navigate that relationship. Um, but if you feel convicted to stop, it is for your good. It is for your good. It is for your good. That I can tell you a great deal. It is for your good.
So Fanta, you asked, what oil do I use specific for anointing? So, um, and Habisha's sister, I pray I said your name correctly. Let me know if I did. You can write it phonetically in the comments, girl, for me, if you'd like. Um, you said it's usually olive oil that's been prayed over. Yes. However, be it God had me to make oil very specifically. And he said, it's okay for me to share what I use. So before anything I had used. So when I made like a really big anointing oil in my wooden bowl, again, my room is like a hot mess. I'm like, you know, getting stuff together. I use organic extra virgin olive oil as my base. And I use this as the base. I use lavender oil, cinnamon oil, and I go by the leading of the Holy Spirit on which oils to buy and what brand even to buy. Holy Spirit is very specific. And so don't rush to buy. Take your time, especially if you are interested in making an oil specific to what God is asking you to do. And make, you know, if God only says use olive oil, only use olive oil. I'm just telling you what God instructed me to do. So the first time I made it, it was this olive oil, lavender oil, cinnamon oil, arcasia oil, but I think it's cinnamon oil, and something else. I can't remember. That was the first, first time I made it. As I grew and I learned about sweet oil, I used... I, w I bought these vials from, I don't know if it's a Dollar General or like that other dollar store that's like a real, real, real dollar store. I don't think it's Dollar General. It's like that other one, like Dollar Tree. I got these from Dollar Tree in the craft section. And I used the former oil that I had, which sits in, I'm going to show you what it's in. So I bought this from like a... It's not a dollar store, but, like, you know those little ghetto stores in the ghetto <laughs> where, like, they be selling, like, home supply stuff and just random stuff? I bought this there. And I, when I made the oil, I put it all in here. And I made the oil in a wooden bowl because pla something about plastics, no. And something about um, metal, no. So, and this is when I was still with my last partner. So, he, like, bought all this stuff for me. So, we actually made the oil together and prayed over the oil together. So those were the things that I used first. Um, now I know to use sweet oil because this is the first oil. This is the oil that God prefers for anointing oil. Prefers. As it does, and go again, go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I use spikenard oil. Um, and I buy it from a place called Miracle Organics. I'm not going to talk in depth about spikenard oil, but spikenard oil is very, spikenard oil is the oil that Mary had used to anoint Jesus' head, I believe, before crucifixion. Um, I also use myrrh. Shout out to one of the ladies in the ministry. She had purchased it for me and paid it in full, and I really appreciated that. She bought it from doTERRA. Um. Usually I get my things from Amazon, but the Holy Spirit had asked me to ask her about myrrh specifically, and then she ended up purchasing it for me, which was such a beautiful, wonderful gift. So I use, when I'm, the other day I was instructed to make a healing oil, and I used sweet oil, spikenard, myrrh. Yeah, I think it was just sweet oil, spikenard, and myrrh, if I can remember correctly. And I had just used some of this oil, or rather some of this oil was left in here because when I went to Jamaica, and this is like the oil that I carry with me all the time, all the time. So if the Holy Spirit instructs me to like anoint the threshold of a place or something of the sort, I carry this oil with me. And then I had added by the instruction of the Holy Spirit, like the measurements that were needed. And then I touched the oil and I prayed over it. And when I make a bigger thing of oil, I touch the oil and I pray over it. And I pray Psalm 91. I pray Psalm 23. I pray Psalm 27. And I pray um, a little, last time I prayed a bit of Psalm 51, which is the Psalm that David had prayed when he um, was re in repentance and asking God to clean him up with like his sock after the sin he committed with Bathsheba. And um, 
what was I going to say? Some of Psalm 139, which is another Psalm of David, where he basically is expressing like, God, you know, my every inward thought, you know, every part of me, you hemmed me in my mother's, my mother's womb. Like you, you know me in, out and through. And so go by the leading of the Holy Spirit on the oils that you make. But this is what I use. I would say of all the oils that I find. Mm, and here's the thing. If you don't bless that oil with the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you don't believe God, and I know this sounds like witchcraft, this part is not. I'm being so serious. You you have to bless that oil. Don't even make the oil if you don't have a relationship with God. Don't buy these oils if you don't have a relationship with God because you're just gonna be do you're just gonna be doing it and not like nothing is not to say that nothing is gonna happen, but it's just like you're just gonna be doing the thing, if that makes any sense. You have to invite the healing virtue of God into the oil. So even like declaring, um, by your stripes, I am healed. I forget exactly what scripture that is. I think it's Isaiah 53, five or Isaiah 55, three. I'm not exactly sure. But like when I was instructed to make the healing oil, which was just the sweet oil, the spike nard and the, the myrrh with a little bit of the oil that I had formerly made. And I had cleaned my feet and I rubbed my feet and I was just praying over my feet after I had already prayed over the oil. When I tell you my feet literally felt better, I was like, wow. And this is right after I came back from Jamaica. And so when I talk about my Jamaica story time, you'll understand more of that as well. Going back to this oil though, the other day, my mom, this was like three days before the Passover. My mom, the Holy Spirit told me to anoint my mom's feet with the oil that I had made. And it wasn't as full like this because I had just put a little more of the other oil that I had formerly made from the bigger bottle in here. When I anointed her feet, mind you, my sister lives with my mom right now. When I tell you me and my mom, me and my sister saw a huge difference in her that day, because I, my, like, my mom was getting for, ready for work and she was like in the bathroom, she was naked though. You know, Jamaicans, we always be like naked kind of walking around the house and stuff. And so I came to her and I was like, oh, when you're done getting ready, let me know. Or like when you're like, when you put on your towel, and I was like, the Holy Spirit told me to anoint your feet. I did not think she was going to let me anoint her feet. And this is where I'm going to end it. I did not think she was going to let me anoint her feet because she was like, kind of like in a little bit of an attitude. So then she puts on her towel and I come into the bathroom. I wash my hands. I sit on the toilet and she's like sitting up. And before she, before I anoint her feet, I anoint her head, I anoint the sides of her ears, which is what I usually do. I anointed her heart, and then I sat on the toilet, and she picked up her feet, and then I anointed her feet, and I just rubbed them for like each foot. I rubbed for like maybe forty five seconds and stuff. I didn't even do it like super long or like how I really like to like massage people, and um, and also I didn't want to take up too much of her time. She was in such a I, I promise you, if my sister was on here, she would testify right now. She came home with acai bowls for us. I, my mom is, I know that sounds small, but that is not my mom, bro. That was, that was the Christ in her way, you know? And you know what's interesting? When I was in my last relationship, I really think that it was because of, my mom really liked him, like, a lot. She never liked any of my boyfriends ever. And me and my mom were never close, so it's not like her opinion really mattered. But she, she loved him. He would, when we would go together, we, me and, me and said person, we was like, we was on, we was moving for God, period. Like, and that's why I say like, none of that was fake. He went to the house. He would like anoint the house. He anointed her, her rooms and stuff like that. So on. And so, um, there's been like a lot of prep work. And I feel like because of that relationship and who he was, like, he actually helped my mom to like grow into like uh, being a hugger. Cause he was like a big, like, he, he just always hugs people. I don't know what he's on now, but at the time he was like very into like hugging people and, um, he would always like hug my mom. And I really feel like because of who he was inside at that time, uh, he had like a very heal, like naturally like a healing presence about him. And so now I'm in a place where I can like, my mom is like expecting that I will hug her, you know, never used to be like that. So for her to let me anoint her feet, amazing. But to see demonic things fall off of her and for her to just like literally like be just I saw the change it, it was it, it really it delighted me deeply and I even like told um one of the ladies who 
who are in the ministry that I love so much. Her name is Brenda Lisa. I love her so much. She's one of those ladies who who calls you like pumpkin and sweetie and beautiful. And I never grew up with that at all. She just has one of those spirits. And it's just like, I love you so much. And she's the one who put the mar for me. And I was telling her about it because I was telling her like, you know, um, God had been telling me to tell her specifically before the Passover, anoint your house, anoint the threshold of your house. And so I will say, and I will talk about it more in detail at another time, anointing oil, very, very, very necessary, very useful, but only go by the leading of the Holy Spirit if you need it. Like, I almost feel like I wasn't supposed to share this as of yet, but I just kind of flowed. So God, I'm sorry if I overshared or I shared prematurely, but um, I really enjoy anointing oil. But anointing oil is not your relationship with God, if that makes any sense. So when the people in the witchcraft world do it, it's just oil. And I'm not even trying to be away. And I know like there's distinguishable differences that I can speak to, but just not right now because I've been here for like four hours. So it's like, I've said enough, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Um, Erica. Okay. Yes. And yes, you can DM me your, the context of your situation. I haven't really gotten onto Instagram like that, but I will look. So I will look, I will more than look. I will look and respond. <laughs> Ooh, Bubble, you asked a good question, but I've been on here four hours, baby girl. I'm getting off. But do you have any thoughts on having bad relationship with food? Do you have certain foods? Do you think certain foods bring you closer to God and cleanliness? I hope that makes sense. Um, in short, I'll say this, and I'm sorry, because I've been saying that all day, like in short, in short, in short. But in short, let the Holy Spirit disciple you and let you know what foods are good for you specifically. So I know for me specifically, God is gluten. Me and gluten, we ain't friends. I'm one of those people where it's like, is it gluten free? And even though sometimes I find myself eating gluten, I the ramifications on it on my body are evident. So me and gluten, me and heavy meat, even though I ate a chopped cheese today, but I needed to put a little meat on these bones. Not good. Okay. Not good whatsoever. Um, do I think that there are certain foods that bring you closer to God? No, but do I think that Holy Communion is good for people? Yes, even though I haven't participated in that as of yet because of like kind of my living circumstance. I think participating in that and asking God about how to change and facilitate your diet is also a good idea. Um, okay, I think Jaws Desiree, I hope I'm saying your first name right. How do demonic things fall off of you? Stay in prayer, stay at God's feet, ask God to show you what is on your bloodline, what demonic things are following you, what things are an entrant coming to and fro, send the Holy Ghost fire to it, have a relationship with Christ, know what God said about you, know God's word. That's how demonic things start to fall off of you. And if you want confirmation, ask God for confirmation that these things are falling off of you. He'll give you a dream or people will start to confirm it to you. Like, oh girl, you just, something is different about you. It's the light of Christ. It's the light of Christ in you. And it doesn't mean that you're like fake or anything like that. If there are certain parts of you that are still dealing with like the flesh, but like there, there will be a genial change in you that is just like you're illuminating the light of Christ, literally. So that's it in short. Um, I am about to get off. I hope that Tatiana Winston, where can we reach out to you, Shade? So happy to see your face is there. Hey girl, God bless you. Thank you. Um, you can reach out to me on um oh my gosh stephanie i love you <laughs> girl i'm literally about to get off of here <laughs> um and i also saw you text me so i'm gonna write you right after i get off because i'm literally about to get off but um what was i gonna say um where can you reach out to me i reach out to me on instagram because i hate emails i just feel like they're just i don't know something about it i just feel disconnected i don't really get on instagram but because another person's erica i think the for the podcast said that she's going to reach out to me, reach out to me there because I'll go specifically intentionally because of that. Sometimes I get on, but most times I am not on because I, you know what, I'm not going to talk about this too deeply because then I'll be here for a little while, but I ha I really had to get off that platform because it was, 
it's not even so much what it is, it's what it's not. I'll say that. And that's a conversation for another day. We are officially at four hours. I have never been here this long. This is crazy. All of everything said, buy some emu oil for your face, y'all. I promise you it will be a great $8 or $12 investment whether you buy it from your local beauty supply store or um, Amazon. Emu, emu oil, E-M-U, for your skin. And it's not a greasy oil. It's a, something that sits right inside the skin. I'm not wearing it today because I left it at my mom's house, but she brought it. But you, I, I guarantee you I would have been wearing it otherwise. When I tell you that oil is amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Even if you are dealing with acne, I'm pretty, because I was just going through a season of dealing with acne. And I'm going to talk about acne on a spiritual level in the future. Not today, but in the future. And diet, all that stuff, so on, so on. But emu oil. Okay. Um, is there anything else I want to tell y'all? I only feel the Holy Spirit, and this is going to sound corny, but like the, this is really what I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say. God is saying God is with you. So Emmanuel, 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 God with us, God with us, God with us, God with us. He has not left you nor forsook you. Go to his feet. Go seek your father. He says those who seek him will find him. If you're if you feel your heart is not pure and you need it to be made over, he ask him to make it over. Ask him, say, I'm tired of living how I used to live. Come do a work in me so that I can let your glory shine here. I'm tired of how it used to be. I want it made over. I want it new. That's what I I, I feel I heard him say. The utterance. That's all I have to say. I love you guys so much. Thank you for spending the four hours from Resurrection Sunday into this Monday with me. God bless you guys. May God bless y'all, increase y'all, prosper y'all, have y'all to have clarity, understanding, and dreams in this hour. Dreams that give you revelation and expose the wicked plot of the enemy so that you can rise up with the strategy of God to come against every evil thing and break every generational curse in the mighty name of Jesus. We are coming back for, to take our territory back for everything our parents and our grandparents did not have the capacity, the understanding, the obedience to fight for. We are taking back what is rightfully ours in the mighty name of Jesus. Read Joel 2. Read Joel 2. Okay? Um, I just feel that as well. So all that said, I, I come into agreement with that in Jesus Christ's precious name for all of those who are on here. I come into agreement with, I believe her name was Nicole, but I can't exactly remember what she wrote. Um, Isaiah 22, 2, in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you guys. God bless. I bid you adieu. And that's it, okay? Laters. Why is not ending?